stuff. Just yes, sure Daniel. I talked to my Dan. Do you prefer Daniel or Dan? Either one. I right, cool. usually just Dan is is you know. Oh, yeah. know. Yeah. But Daniel's the thing is that that sometimes there's several of us, and so I'll just go by Daniel to right. You know, it's if Dan is easier to use Dan, whichever it doesn't matter. Right. Yeah, Dan. I know I there's a Dan in my game group. Daniel kind of is one of those names where if you want to get someone's attention, it's like, Daniel. Yes, right. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, what that's, my dad would do. Yeah, exactly. You <laughs> Daniel. Name of what parents would yell at you when you're angry. Yeah. yeah, that's the same way for all of us. See older on two, you see two on. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I need to log into Twitch. I don't. I don't actually know how I got that handle. Really. The Alderon was a character name, and I had signed up with that name for an eBay account in you know like 2000 or something. <laughs> and then I didn't use it for a while, and then I. I tried to get back in it and I don't know, I had to reset things. And they automatically changed my name to Alderon 2 UC2. Really? So, okay, I'll just go with that. That's interesting. It is. I have no idea why that. Wow. So, Jay, that uh, code DMing was real surreal, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to play. So last time I played Hawk, I, I, I said this was uh, the fun ra- first fundraiser we did, and Anna played Matt and Ariel, and I played him that night. I haven't played him since because you know he's twelve fifteen fighter thief. You know, just uh, only if Tim DM some high level great Hawk I play him. But it, it felt good. It felt it felt good to do it. It was interesting. It was very interesting. A lot of RP, a lot of description of, of that area of Northern Saline and the district real estate. I had fun with it. So, plus, you know, I got to be mean to some characters. Well, not mean, but a little stuffy, elven arrogance there, you know. So, we may, uh, we may do that again in the near future, but do it reverse, you know. So. Well, we'll talk about elven behavior. Yes, uh, oh, absolutely. Okay, are we going with that? Yeah, yeah, we're, uh, okay. definitely. Okay, yeah, it was my idea. Since we talked to Rao on, on Gabin, I thought we could kind of talk about the, the other elves. On, on the oh, absolutely. And, and think yeah. about this. So you have, uh, it'll be Elf Week next week. <laughs> yeah, it'll be Elf, elf Week, yeah. yeah. Should, that should be kind of Christmas, but we, we do it after Christmas instead. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, look at that. That thing just went off. Well, that wasn't, um, I guess it, uh, what am I doing? Hit this button, Jay. See? Hey Troy, good to see you, man. Can you hear us? Please say you guys can hear us. What's up, George? I want to write a something small, I think, about the Lendor Isles and the elves there. Oh. I have this idea that <clears throat> there's a way to explain those references without actually without the elves actually being. It's interesting. Well, we need to have you on the show for just talk about that topic. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, yeah. In a nutshell, if you, if you read the, the initial discussion, it's it's sort of like there's this myst, mystical, uh, religious pilgrimage situation, and they're not really sure what's going on with the elves. And what I'm thinking is that in the Greyhawk Wars, the people on the Lendor Isles took advantage of that sent a few people off as, as sort of fake what? rip to spread rumors that elves had taken over the so place wrong don't anybody come here yeah yeah you know i'll yeah. just jump and in that's very interesting and i also think there's a misconception between the spin drifts and lip mm-hmm. they, they are different but they are kind of grouped together and, and the names and Great the hero tree and stuff are used interchangeably by a lot of people who haven't read the stories i think the people that Originally wrote this stuff for probably in the UK and then in the UK, but then there were editors and others who sponsors and they out whatever, so they got mixed up more than they shouldn't have, I think, because they seem to be 
separate entities when you talk about the stories of the Spindrift are different from, from the story of Lendor Isles, but right. they get grouped together. But I don't see them ever until after the Great Wars when the elves just invaded the whole shebang, right. so to speak. So, yeah. 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 You will see a new. You will see a new, mostly com uh, complete piece of infinite uh, dimensions on the table on Thursday. All right, mostly complete. You know, build a master yeah. crafters feverishly working on it. So, I know we're early. I I, I wanted to go and uh, hop on and just get. get Like all of our other spot, all all six of our sponsors, they're really a, a good sponsor too. Whenever I ask anything of any of our sponsors, they they, they jump right up. So. Oh, I think I did an underdog uprising shout out. Did I do that? I forgot to put in that uh, that shout out for Underdark Uprising that Troller Games and Reaper and Strategy, all three of them are, are, are sponsored, have donated uh, a lot of uh, giveaways and gifts for the uh, fundraiser event. So. Yeah, I ordered a scanner today, so I can start scanning and stuff. Yeah, I'm, I know, Mac, I'm a little sneaky here. I just wanted to get on a little early here and. Uh, Look, see, Blue Box is raiding in already, so, uh, you know, yeah. I, I have a crystal ball. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, John. Yeah. That was a good show, John. That was awesome. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you, John. I'll shout you out a couple times here, too. Once again, if I hit the right button, if I hit the wrong button once tonight. <coughs> So many awesome people in chat because they're scrolling by here. So, yeah. Oh. See you, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Hey, uh, both of us DMs worked well together last night, if you watched. Kind of flowed. Go back and watch that. I was busy with other stuff, so mm. I missed it. But I need, I need. To oh, it was, it was, that. it was really good. It was really good. So, is that going to YouTube? Yeah, it's on. Um, uh, uh, I'm not John. It's uh, it's on Twitch first. For like yeah, it's on Twitch for 90 days. days. So you can get it on yeah. Twitch. Yeah. And then you get the chat too. That's so it's, yeah, but you get the ads. That's the. the well, you get the ads. Well, uh, George, um, I haven't received, my, I've just ordered a, a new a scanner so I can scan all that stuff. But hard, computer hardware is impossible to get. This is unless you're a millionaire, so I just put that on hold for a while. So, yeah. so no new computer in like six months is probably And maybe there's something that will the private businesses will come down because everybody was in A couple videos yeah. on YouTube. That yeah, it was the NVIDIA <laughs> updated the drivers, and, and that caused the problem with hardware acceleration. acceleration so, yeah. Multi 
multitasking is good, and uh, I know your stuff's on its way for the uh, fundraiser, too. So, uh, I really appreciate it. Oh, yeah, that's another uh, uh, patron I need to join, so, yeah. So this song is entitled uh, Blood on Snow. <laughs> mm. Nice. Can't hear it, but it's up. Oh, yeah. I've stepped. Yeah, it's uh, Dark Fantasy Studios. It's great stuff. Dwayne, are they featuring? Are they featuring the classic rule set that um, that Mike Mike Wilson uh, did at Celestian? Is that what you're talking about? I uh, yeah, sure it's all to you, man. It's, it's a lot of this is uh, you're doing. Re recommended me uh, check this out. I was like, oh my gosh, this is great. So I own it all. Well, that's really cool. The, cl the classic rule set to me, and I know there's a lot of the uh, kit books are in there too, which is neat. So. I'm so happy you did. Yeah, I'm so happy you did. I'll link you up again there, uh, John. Jump again. Oh, I'm still married. Yeah, my wife, uh, we got, so, we got, so, Tuesday night's like a new TV night, and I said, I promise I'll be off by 9 Eastern. So, uh, I had to keep my promise last night. Uh, we, uh, we watch Prodigal Son if you watch that. Kind of our thing. You know, disturb serial killers, you know. If you watch that show. Alright. Look at that. We're almost at a real great time here. 20 seconds. Yeah, the bachelor that's funny awesome i put that sound on tonight just to change it up too good evening i'm jay killer gazumba how is everyone tonight thank you john um from blue box for the raid in and uh it, it's really really appreciated and i'll pop that up to show that it happens because you know when we're on a screen it doesn't work so tonight i got uh, the normals with me the normal co-hosts we got mike bridges greyhawk mike and we also have the great Anna Meyer. And then our very special guest tonight, uh, Mr. Daniel Boggs. And you'll be like, who's that? <laughs> who, so, Daniel, who are you in Twitch so people know that you've been around? Uh, in Twitch, I'm Alderon2uc2. And uh, I post a lot on the original Dungeons & Dragons forum under Alderon. A little bit on Dragon's Foot every now and again. Um, and I have a blog that, uh, when did I start that? 2011, I think, uh, called Hidden in Shadows, when, where I, I look at, um, well, a, a range of things to do with what you might call game archaeology, the early days of Dungeons and Dragons, and how people played, or different aspects of the rules, uh, whatever sort of strikes my fancy, um, Academically, I was trained as an anthropologist, worked as an archaeologist. I work now as a uh, historic preservationist. Nice. Um, Perfect. So my, I, I use that approach. And in particular, I was always interested in a field of anthropology called applied anthropology, which the idea is that if you study something, you learn about something, you look for ways to take that and make it useful or look for how that might work in some problems that you may have now. So in terms of games, I'm always looking at, well, here's a mechanic that somebody used in you know, 1975. Um, and this is how you could apply it to your games now. And you might want to consider doing that because, you know, it's just super cool. So all sorts of things like that. Wow. Yep. Which 
kind of leads us to the uh, the reason for the Daniel being on tonight in the discussion is that um, you are like the, according to that Twitter <laughs> post, you are the historian <laughs> for Blackmore, mm. which my combined knowledge is as much as I know more about 5e than I know about yep. Blackmore and that's saying something, right? So I can look on my space. <laughs> no, I'm just trying to think my knowledge of Blackmore is like if you took everything about Blackmore and you dropped it on the floor, broke into a thousand pieces, then I might know the big pieces. You might have, you yeah. might know some things here and there. How about you, Anna, yeah. on your no, knowledge? I, I know of things here, here and there, and I've also been gifted with some, some interesting stuff that I collected over the years. People have given me some, some old maps and stuff because they wanted to see if I could incorporate it into Greyhawk. But my, so I know that he was part of Dave Arneson's original, it was his original game setting. And then yeah. there is some sort of homage in, in Greyhawk to that mm. setting in, in name and a few details, but that's about it. That's as much as I know about it. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I would characterize that a little differently. Uh -huh. um, yeah. And I'll, I think you'll understand why eventually as I go through. Yeah, I'm so eager to know this. So, so, it's, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. so can you, when you get a chance, Daniel, link your blog in chat. Rox, Faris, a couple others are going to want to uh, ask for yeah. it. And so, uh, sure. Yeah, I suppose I can do that. Yeah, whenever, you know, you don't have to do it right um, this minute. Well, the, I mean, it's hidden in shadows. So it's uh, a longer box. Oh, and yeah. We'll get you right there. Oh, yeah. my gosh, John. Oh, John. <laughs> wow. Oh, my gosh, John. <laughs> Thank you, John. Yep. John. Oh. Where's the car? Good lord. At least I turned the sound down. <laughs> Holy <laughs> sh. Yep. 20 gift. Uh, I apologize. Uh, thank you so very much for your generosity. And um, Daniel, it, you're going to hear this over and over and over. I kind of have it turned down as far as I can. So, mm. um, but uh, um, hopefully, uh, wow, that was wonderful of you. Um, so. Yeah, not 20 gift subs. So, uh, yeah, that, that was wonderful and unbelievable. Um, so, Daniel, uh, mm. what got you interested? But Blackmore, like when? Yeah, you know, that, yeah that's, that's an interesting question. I guess, I, in part, I'm drawn towards game histories anyway. I, I, in college, I did a lot of research on the history of chess just because, you know, and I wasn't even that big of a chess player. Um, I think what really, what, what really, uh, well, I always knew about this guy named Dave Arneson, right? I mean, I, I started playing D&D &D with, um, actually, even before the um, Moldvay set came out. Um, right around that era, 1981, 82, and I got a subscription to, to Dragon Magazine, and you know, on the boxes and here and there, you would see the name Dave Arneson as a co-designer of D&D. &D. And I'm like, oh, okay, but all the articles are by Gygax. So um, I wonder who this Arneson guy is. Yeah. You know, that's kind of a mystery. So then in the mid eighties, the DA series came out and I specifically remember buying Temple of the Frog just because it had Arneson's name on it. And I was like, I want to see, you know, <laughs> what what this is about. So that was kind of that. Um, we got married in the you know, 2000s, had a kid, we got a house, all that kind of stuff. And um, started doing a lot of more trolling around on the internet. Um, and got really interested in, long story short, went Castles and Crusades to begin with. It's then I got really ironic. <laughs> yeah, in uh, original Dungeons and & Dragons and what that was all about. So on the OD&D &D site, OD&D &D 74, that's the only place that Arneson ever posted. And I saw him there and I thought, wow, this is, this is kind of cool. Here's, I, you know, I remembered the name and didn't really know anything about him. Um, and then, before, like within a year he passed away yeah. and so that really sort of triggered me into okay i it was a missed opportunity here who was this guy what did he do and what's this setting that he that he uh, 
um, put together black form. So that's how that began that sort of. So you never talked to him. To digging it, I know. Never okay. talked to him. Um, yeah. Okay. I got yeah. to meet him at Gen Con once. Mm. I think they were selling because he was in a booth. I think they were selling a three third edition mm -hmm. uh, adaptation of Blackmore. And yep. I remember, I'm pretty sure I got it, and I stood there and talked to him for a while because it's like, well, I know who Arneson is. Thousands of people in this room probably don't. But, yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. I mean, these days, hardly anybody knows who Gygax is anymore. <laughs> yeah. You know. Have you had any any seminars and stuff at Gen Con or something? Or was it just there as a guest? Mike, when you met him, was that a seminar Oh, no, or this was, was in the dealer hall. Oh, okay, yep. Yeah, because you get Larry Elmore in the dealer hall, and you get all these great names in, oh, yeah. in the dealer hall all the yeah. time. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. you know, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think he really did any seminars... And maybe not too, not, I don't think he ran too many games at the later Gen Cons. He might have. Uh -huh. He did do a lot of conventioneering in the 80s and 90s in on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. But it was similar to what you said. I, you know, I met him and then like a year later he died. Yeah. Yeah. So, that, yeah. So that, that for me really began to, I, you know, I put my archaeologist hat on and said, okay, I want to find out about this. And the more that I, I learned, I got a copy of the first fantasy campaign, which is, is a key document to have. The more that I learned, I was like, wow, this, this is this is a cool setting. This is interesting. There's a lot that can be done here yeah. in a whole lot of different ways uh, to take the setting. But um, it, maybe it would, it, it would be best if I just so to start with how it came about in sure. the first place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I'm all ears tonight. Um, oh, yes. probably the most quiet I'm going to be on. Yes. <laughs> if you want to hear this, this is yeah. awesome. so much excitement. Yeah. 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 So um, ultimately, all roads that are Dungeons & Dragons or fantasy role-playing games lead back to one person, and that is David Wesley. At least in the in the U.S. and um, Major Wesley is still very much alive, so you can actually talk to him, which is is great. And he's uh, he's full of stories. But he started so we're in the Twin Cities of uh, in Minnesota. There was a, a a large. They developed a large war gaming group. Um, in the 1960s, his late 60s. In late 68, 69, he started playing this game that they called Bronstein. And without getting into the weeds of details and all this, the, the, the basic idea there was that Wesley would assign you a character, which was a bit novel in itself. But what was really novel about it was this character could be anybody. So it was set during a Napoleonic war setting um, it was called Bronstein because that was the name of the town in Prussia or wherever and there were some military characters there was a colonel for example but he also handed out um, characters like the the student revolutionary which is what Dave Arneson was given as a character to play you know everything from the town doctor to 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 any sort of figure and they were given individual goals and said, okay, you, you try to enter, you do whatever you need to do to try to accomplish your goal. May I ask what, what year is this? This is, this is late 68 into 69 is okay. when, when developing these, these games. Okay. Um, so those guys loved it. And Arneson was especially enthusiastic about it. And that was important because he, he had, even though he was just a kid at the time, um, well, college student, he had become kind of a focal point for the war gaming group. It, um, and a lot, of the, a lot of the games were in his basement. All right, so fast forward a little bit. Later that year, in, later of 1969, uh, Arneson goes to, to Gen Con. I believe that's correct, meets Gary Gygax. 
And the two of them start talking Napoleonic um, navies. And Arneson has this set of rules that he's working on. And so, uh, long story short, they, they begin to, to collaborate on a set of Napoleonic naval warfare rules. Now, for Arneson, this was a, this was a, a step up. He's, he's uh, in 1970, he's uh, 23, I think, 1969, he's 22. Gygax is 31. There's almost 10 years between them. So Gygax is kind of a mentor figure. He's much more connected in the... Um, war gaming world and he uh, and Gygax is becomes uh, the chief employee of Guide on Games which is important for as the story progresses. So the two of them begin to collaborate on what becomes um, Don't Give Up the Ship and that's published in 1972 uh, and Mike Carr is also brought in on that game, who's another Twin Cities guy, and who's also very involved in Blackmore. So, all right, so back to Wesley, right? So uh -huh. they're playing these Bronze Tank games and they're developing these character-driven character driven games, but they're all one-offs and the characters, sometimes they cooperate, but mostly they're against each other. Wesley goes, he's drafted, he goes off to the army in October of 1970. And so Arneson takes over, well, Arneson and his buddy, Dwayne Jenkins, take over running the Bronstein games. Okay. And exactly how this plays out isn't nailed down. I mean, there, there are some variation there, but it's what, the, what happens first is that Jenkins decides, okay, we're not gonna we're not gonna play in Prussia. We're not gonna play in South America where they had been setting the Banana Republic versions of Bronstein. We're gonna go to the old west. And I'm gonna set up a town instead of Bronstein, which is brownstone, <laughs> I'm gonna call it brownstone in English. Um, and I'll just, I'll just point this out right now. This is why Greyhawk is Greyhawk. Right? <laughs> okay. Brownstone, black moor. Gray Hawk. Gray Hawk. It's a naming convention. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. Um, so, Dwayne Jenkins sets up Brownstone. And what's different now is that instead of these one off games, he sets it up as a campaign. So, Arneson's character, for example, is a, um, a Mexican sort of peasant who goes by the flattering name of El Poncho. <laughs> and he starts off as, as sort of a nobody. And from game to game to game, he, he, he becomes a notorious bandit. And then the sheriff of the town tries to catch him. And so it becomes a, a recurring campaign over the spring of 1971. Wow. At the same time, Arneson um, <clears throat> so he's working on he's working on Don't Give Up the Ship with Gygax he's also involved in a number of play-by-mail games and he's coordinating this massive multiplayer Napoleonics play-by-mail game with something like 40 players or something. It's, it's like crazy so in that spring 1971 um He's, he's also involved in the Castle and Arneson is involved in the Castle and Crusade Society. He's an officer and it changes positions a couple times. He writes a letter to, to, uh, uh, to Kuntz, to Robert Kuntz. Okay. Because uh, Robert is the head of the, he's the king nominally of the Castle and Crusade Society. And in this letter, he sends him a map and he sends a little uh, one page description of that he's setting up this campaign or it's not clear if he's if he's set it up already and and run some some battles or whatever in it or if he is has just set it up 
and it's in a land called the Northern Marches. And I think you have the map from that somewhere, Jay. Okay. Uh, it's not, not that, that one. Not it's that not one. That. Not, that, not no. this one, no. It's, it's so the, hard. It's yeah. one that looks like the familiar Blackmore map that you would see in the later publication. Oh, it, so in the Darlene map? The Dar no. No, no, no. No. It's, no. Okay. No. Um, in the, the TSR map. publications. Oh, man. So you remember, I, uh, so here's what happened, everyone. Uh, mm. And John, thank you for that cheer. I can't scroll through my pictures anymore yeah. like I used to Look because my, my they office. used flash. And, and and the flash is dead. And so all the, anything that was a flash is it, el is element it based, one? I can't, um, I can't just uh, scroll through like I used to. Well, if it shows up, I'll, I'll point it out. It's, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. So he sends this map in this letter, and in the letter he says, I'm setting up this fictional campaign. I think I know which one it is. Here. There are uh, various conventions, and he mentions who's who he intends or who is as the various factions who will be playing them. Um, and they include the Red Wizard. How about that Coven. one? That one? Nope. Oh. That's the next one. <laughs> All right, well, I'll leave that one up. Yeah, yeah. I'll leave that one up. You leave it that is. one up. That's that's fine. That's good. Um, and so it's all very interesting. This is right at the same time that that Gary Gygax is working on the fantasy supplement for Chainmail, and so he publishes that. Um, okay. Probably a, about a month later. So that's a little fuzzy too. Now. I'm going to backtrack a little bit. <laughs> in the year before, I mentioned that, that they're all in the Castle and Crusade Society. Uh, Gygax had mentioned that he was producing a map for, for the Castle and Crusade Society to use for their Avalon Hill games or their diplomacy games or, or what have you. And this is a map that he then releases about a month after uh, Arneson's letter to Kuntz. And that's that's an in, uh, what is it, Domesday? I wanna say 13, but I sh don't quote me on that. I'd have to look it up. Um, that is what you might call the proto Flaness map. It's the map of the great kingdom. Really? Yes. Hang on a second. Is that the... Yeah. Anna has hand-drawn maps from Gary Gygax, by the way. I was just going way. to see if we, we, might might have, we might have the, the one here. Hang on a second. Is this the... Well, maybe not that one. Yeah, maybe not that one. Are talking about the Lynn one? Ma no. Maybe not this no. one. Then. Not this one. With the, uh, let me see. Well, hold on. Let, there, me go to, great, let me go to speaker view. Uh, great no. Kingdom stuff. Not that one. No. Not that one. No. No. Nope. Not nope. that one. Okay. Okay. Nope. Not that one. No. Nope. No. Nope. This is the Great Kingdom Duchy of Ten. I uh, think yeah. I've seen a scan of Proto it somewhere. Blackmore. Yeah. There's, okay. there's a couple different versions of it floating around, and one of them is hand drawn, probably originally by Gygax, and then other people have, at well, there's very there's different versions, so some of them have yeah. more on them than others. Um. And then the one that was published in the Domesday book itself was probably drawn by someone else. And I, I won't get into that. I know somebody who's working on that, so I won't say, I won't steal their thunder. But um, the long and short of it is that, that Arneson gets his next copy of the Domesday book. And I think that's when he changes his map. Because the other map that you had up there is his second Blackmore map. Okay. The first one that he sent to Kuntz, um, it, it looks familiar, and I'll explain why it looks familiar to everyone. In, in it. But he never actually called that a, the Blackmore map. He just talked about it being the Northern Marches. But it, it's the same thing. Because at the same time in other he has a newsletter that he calls the corner of the table that he's sending out to his Napoleonics group. And in that, he talks about the Black Moors at that time. So Big Mac all these things are coming map. together, essentially. Yeah, Big Mac just so, linked a Mistara yes. map. Uh, so which mm -hmm. one mm -hmm. is that? The Mistara map is the, 
Yeah, that's the map I show here on yep. the screen there. Yeah, okay. that's the one he links to. That's yeah. the one that looks just like his very first map from okay. March. Okay. And this is copyrighted uh, Dave Arneson, so yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I actually own that one. Yeah. Yes, right. There you have it. You've yeah. got it right there. That's yep. correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't judge. Um, Daniel, I, think I don't I have think I have three. that map in this grouping here, but that's okay. Yeah. Show. But I, I like three uh, no, I didn't. I don't think I did send it to you because I figured everybody had that one. Okay. Um, but okay. so, yeah, the um, I'm probably losing people here. Long story no, 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 short, no, 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 no this is great. Not Black this audience. Not, not this us. audience. This okay. is Legends of Lore. Yep. He draws good. a map of Blackmore, and then when he he's in his Blackmore campaign, we see a different map. And that's that different map is the one that he uses. And and the difference is that it's meant to fit on that great kingdom map. Oh. So it's supposed to be over on the other side and in, in the great kingdom in the Greyhawk map, but it ends up on the west. Oh, okay. Oh, but yeah. maybe. It was, yeah. Okay. So so it was originally part to be part of, of the, the northern side. marches of the great kingdom. Correct. Oh. Wow. Correct. Okay. Part of the awesome. northern marches of the Great Kingdom. Nice. Correct. Oh, this is so cool. Yep. So it looks like it looks like honestly, I don't think he it's hard to say, but I don't think he even ran any games prior to him changing the map. Mm -hmm. So nineteen in, in March, he has his northern marches map, let's call it. Then the Great Kingdom map comes out in the Domesday book. This is at the same time he goes on vacation to um, to Sweden and to England, which is kind of important because he meets up with war gamers in London. Um, some things may have come out of that. Okay. Comes back around August. They start seriously playing Blackmore games, and the first one is actually that peop that most people remember is about him. Uh, a game that he set up where that he 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 said that I was lost on my flight back from Europe somewhere a plane crash somewhere in Iceland and you guys got to come find me so they all go there and they're all playing themselves basically they go <laughs> in and end up on a river go through some magic cave and end up in this this land where there's trolls <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that's kind of the uh, the first thing that some of them remember, but they quickly sort of moved past that into all sorts of adventures. And you start uh, hearing about, because uh, Arneson writes this newsletter called the Blackmore, um, <clears throat> uh, Rumor Monger and Gazette, I think. Is, um, where he, that sounds familiar. Yeah, he, he's, so he, he mentions a few of these things and that's when some of the familiar characters start to appear and these things the adventures that are taking place there are all taking place on his second map that you see a copy of in the first fantasy campaign publication and that was the map that popped up there first uh, briefly mm -hmm. yes we, why don't I see if I can find it? Since uh, Jay's having some trouble here. I acquired this first fantasy campaign thing from uh, someone who was getting out of the game and they had a oh. big old trunk of old d, d stuff and they were like, you want any of this, Mike? And I'm thumb through it. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Don't got this. You know, oh, yeah, I'm that's awesome. It. <laughs> it's really hard yeah. to get now, especially the um, especially the, the original. Let me see if I can do this. Uh, without the yeah. <laughs> now is that the one? Is that the one I have up here? I can relink that one. That's yeah, not, that's uh, not, that's this is not a problem. Success. There we go. I got that. I got yeah, that. Yeah. Yes, that map. I can. So that that map is on the I can the Great Kingdom map, which is the same map that becomes the map of the Flannis. Uh, all right. So wait. So this is supposed. All right. So this is the Northern Reaches. Correct. That mm. is supposed to, and that's what kingdom means, right? That is the great kingdom. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So that is um, that elf forest. Yeah. yeah. All right. Dragon Hills Duchy of Ten. There's the Duchy of Ten, which is yes. they changed the T E N H later on. Right. In, in Greyhawk. Right. Yep. Okay. Right. Yep. So those then there's really not other than the name. There's there's no relation between the two, whereas there's more of a relation between Greyhawks. Blackmore and Arneson's Blackmore, uh, in terms of the details. Of yeah. The, so that was much bigger of a connection than I thought it was. Mm. So they and they adventured back and forth. There were times when some of the players who were the Greyhawk regulars went, or I'm sorry, who were the Black Blackmore, the Blackmore bunch, went on adventures in Greyhawk City. They did a couple of those, and vice versa. In fact. Uh, that's why you get the um, the Rob Coons what? article about uh, Robilar in the in the City of the Gods. Okay, so what year was with that? What year are we talking about for that? Like, where are we? Are we in seventy five, seventy four? Robilar in the City of the Gods is seventy six. Okay, seventy six. Okay. Some of the others we're talking seventy four. Okay. Seventy three, seventy four. All right. Yeah. Can't even read yet. Hey, that's all right. I'm like seven, seven to nine. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, so at that point, I'm, I'm just were, learning to read. Then <laughs> they were shared worlds. There was no, you know, Black yeah. Blackmore and Greyhawk were both on the same continent. Oh, this is this is dynamite. This is so okay. Cool. That is why there's a Blackmore in the in, northwest, the an upper yeah. northwest. Okay. Um, do you and know you, how he came about that it moved up to that corner? Was that just? Uh, that's actually that, that's actually pretty close to where there's there was more space added in between. Yeah. Um. I but I, I did a post where I, I took the, the kingdom map and I sort of broke it up into pieces and I said, okay, this bit's here and this bit's there and that bit's yeah. there. Um. And what you see is that the the western end of the Great Kingdom map from the, the Domesday book, the original Great Kingdom map. And the western end of the Flannis map are pretty dang close. Yeah. Oh. It's only as you as you move eastward that things got that more stuff got stuck <laughs> in, basically. All right, so so you had Blackmore up uh, there, and then he just started putting in Shield Lands of Aluna, and that kind of slid it over a little bit. So right. Canadian asks, right. technically, was was there ever a Greyhawk and Blackmore? And the answer sounds like yes, right? Because it was yeah. all together. Yes, it was all together. It was Greyhawk all together, and okay, and they and as characters, they would travel back and forth between the two. Wow, yeah, they, it wasn't. They didn't consider it separate at all. It was the same world. Well, I, peanut butter. No, I, I understand. Yeah. It's it, it, cool. it's almost yeah. like it, it, think about this, and, and I'm putting this in in my dumb down perspective. Mm -hmm. I have Greyhawk. I have certain characters back when I was young that Tim DM'd in Greyhawk, mm -hmm. and then I had characters that I DM'd, and they kind of didn't cross over that much, but they were in the same thing. It's kind of the similar similar, you know? Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. Um, makes makes sense. Makes right. total sense. Right. And if, if you look in the original uh, in the original three booklets for for D and D, that it, Blackmore is mentioned right in the introduction, um, along with Greyhawk, they're, they're both there. And then and then interestingly in dungeon number, I think is it four, maybe the first one, and then definitely six and seven. I think there's a story by Gary under a pseudonym called the Gnome Catch that's set in um, Greyhawk, you know, at the time is, so there's, there's little, there's differences. Like, interestingly, the, the Great Kingdom is, I think, called Thaland instead of Erdy. What's it called? Thaland? T-H-A-L-A-N-D, Thaland? I think so, yeah. Wow. Um, okay. It's, it's definitely a T-H something. Okay. Uh, I just read it. Oh, a week yeah. Ago. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> Gary cool. says Stalin. Yeah. That can be. That can name can be reused for fun yeah. stuff. Yeah. No. Uh, campaign. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, there's. Um, and Ferrand. That's kind of yeah. I think it has the logos. Has a has a blog called OSR Grimoire, 
Mm -hmm. where he does a really nice breakdown of the gnome catch story. So OSR Grimoire, the blog. Um, so that's, that's, and this, you never find out what happens. Wow. Because after, after Dragon 7, the story never continues. And the only person I know of who has said that they've read the rest of the story is Rob Koontz. So we got to go to Corsica it's out there somewhere, but <laughs> Corsica or Sardinia to find them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so but what happens is uh, there's various adventures that uh, the, the protagonist has, and then he ends up as a guard for a merchant caravan that travels North into Blackmoor. And, and uh, it gets ambushed and, they talk about a revolution in the castle, uh, at Blackmore Castle, and um, <clears throat> sorry, um, okay. he he you know he gets in a big fight, but he escapes, and so all this is taking place in Blackmore, as is as it is connected to Greyhawk at that time. So this was uh, seventy six, I think, is when okay. that was published. So. Uh... You have basically, if you go back to 70, roughly 69, 70, you got six, seven years of this going on where they're just playing. Yeah, 71 is really when you okay, get five years. Blackmore starting. Right. Yeah. Right. So they're just playing um, Arneson and they're going over each other's houses. They're playing by mail. How are they playing? Oh, wow. Well, okay. So do uh, you remember I said he was Arneson became kind of a magnet of gaming? Right. So people would come to his house basically all weekend long. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes they would come during the week. There was one guy named Fred Funk who later developed his own world called Fred's Fred's World. He's he's no longer living, but you can look that up. And it's it's interesting because there's Blackmore characters in there. It's like, oh yeah, I recognize that name. <laughs> but um, and this was a second edition thing that was going on. Um, he would call him on the phone and, and play over the phone. Oh, my so, God. Wow. Long distance. Yeah. That was a, that was and, a bill. Huh. You know, this is before they really had any rules. Arnest yeah. was – he had notes and he had a, a system of a character sheet. Mm -hmm. so he, and he had a combat system that he was using. And they were using the chain mail rules. Um, they were using it a lot for reference. Like, you know, this monster is – you know, takes so many hits – and it, you know, has these special abilities because it's all written right there. Uh, and some some of the magic items. Plus, they're developing all new stuff themselves. So, and this is the kind of stuff that I that I love to delve into on my blogs. And it's I just I don't know, I'm geeky that way. I uh, have fun with it. Yeah. But um, uh, let's see. So. <clears throat> Uh, 71, 72, they, and they're expanding. And in, in 72, this is the seminal event. And I don't think it's ever been properly, um, I, I don't think it's, it's been discussed to the extent that it should be. Okay. In 1972, at the end of the summer, David McGarry, now, who knows what, who knows, anybody know David McGarry? Heard of him. No. Nope. You would have, you just might not make the connection. He's the guy that invented the dungeon board game. Oh, okay. Ooh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So he's, he's like 18 at that point. And wow. And he's a central member of Arneson's gaming group. Um, oh, and. Jay, to finish answering your question, yes, the, at, at his house, and they also gamed at the college, at St. Thomas College. They had a, okay. a place there. So they were all over the place. Back to McGarry. He, um, end of the summer, he's been painting houses all summer. So he wasn't really gaming that much. Um, but he was drafted into the army. And he had a breakup with his girlfriend. All these kind of things are happening. In the army, because he because he was painting houses so much, he lost a lot of weight. They rejected him. It wouldn't take him into it. So all of a sudden, his life that he thought he was going to have to go into just turned upside down. 
Where he and was he spent spending. an entire weekend inventing the game of Dungeon. And the whole idea was, at this time, Arneson had been playing the thing, running the game by himself for about a year and was complaining that you know, all you guys ever want to do is, is play dungeon games and get tired of this. And so McGarry thought, well, I can take this idea and put it on a board. And that's uh -huh. what he did. Well... Arneson, you know, he, he shows this to Arneson and, and, and he's like, hey, um, this is great. We should, you, you should turn this into a thing. And McGarry's thinking the same thing. So he writes letters off to Milton Bradley and, and whoever. And Arneson says, look, you know, uh, Gary Gygax, who, who he'd already collaborated with on um, Don't Keep Up the Ship, is the representative guide on games why don't the two of us go see him? Because he's been asking me about what I'm doing with this this uh, Blackmore thing and, and how the, his chainmail rules are part of that. And and so the two of them drive, this is a late November, probably after Thanksgiving, probably the weekend right before December, somewhere right in there of 1972. The two of them go there and they demo their games uh, to Gygax. And this is when Gary Gygax is turned on to the thing that will become Dungeons and Dragons. Ah, so that was okay. Mm -hmm. So Dungeon is is released by is it released by TSR? Eventually. Eventually. Yeah, so the Dungeon game story. actually predates D and D, so to speak. So. Um, it wasn't released before D and D, yeah. though. Right? Yeah, it was not. It gets um, released in the early eighties, correct? Yeah, but as a concept, it uh, was, I think seventy. Fine. Oh, it's that early. Wow. I didn't realize yeah, it was that early. Okay. Yeah. What basically what happened there was was Gygax arranged for after um after McGarry's con uh, attempts to get Milton Bradley and whoever else involved didn't work out. Um he arranged for Guide on Games to publish Dungeon. And at that time, that spring of 1973 was kind of the end of Guide on Games. So so even though they had a contract, it, it nothing ever came of it, and so eventually, in the, you know, the, we're talking about a year from the time the TSR was founded. So one of the first things that that Gygax did was reach out to McGarry and say, "Hey, we'll publish your game." So that that eventually did happen um, wow. in 1975, wow. I think. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So it's a whirlwind of stuff that's going on, and all these these different people that are, are contributing ideas and very creative yeah but i guess the point with blackmore is that that that's not a separate thing from greyhawk because when when that 1972 meeting happens like the very next day uh gygax calls rob Kuntz over and says hey let's try this out and, and at that point he didn't really have a good handle on on what he wanted to do with it, or, or what exactly Dave was doing, other than than uh, the experience that he had in playing it. So he, at first, it seems that he was thinking, well, this would be a vehicle for storytelling, creative storytelling, which, it, it, of course, it has become that. Uh -huh. um, but then he calls Dave up and says, hey, you know, can you send me some rules? And Dave's like, well, all I've got is, you know, my basic scattered campaign notes and whatever. So he sent him what he had, um, conversations back and forth. And then that spring is when Gygax really started typing out the manuscript that would become the three little books that become, you know, everything we know. Um, yeah. And at that time, they were, like I said, they, they, they were in communication. They considered it all to be part of sort of an outgrowth of the Castle and Crusade Society. They had that Castle and Crusade Society map, and Arneson was already running his campaign in his little corner of the map. And Gygax also had his little corner of the map, which is basically the shield plans, which at that time was called Walworth. Ha, huh, that's funny. Okay, yeah. so the name, all right. And so yeah. he he puts a little dot and says, this is where Greyhawk is, and, you know, the, the castle of the Mad Archway. 
whatever it is, and um, starts building his dungeon there. Okay, Walworth County is where Lake Geneva is at. Oh, so that, mm-hmm. well, yep. thank you. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that connection from. either. Yep. Oh. Yep. Yep. So, wow. yeah, so that's, that's how it all, and up until the parting in 1976. I was just going to say, then, then the parting between, between right. the two, Gary and, and, and Dave. That's when things changed. And, uh-huh. and yeah. at that point, you know, the fan base doesn't really know anything other than what maybe has come out in a few Dragon magazines. And, yeah. Um, so Dave Arneson leaves TSR. Um, Dave McGarry leaves TSR. My car stays at TSR. Okay. So my car goes on to write, um, is it, it's B1, uh, In Search of the Unknown, which is just, you know, an awesome artifact of the times. Um, but Gygax, or I'm sorry, Arneson um, is fl- sort of floundering around with, he does a few different things. But he, one of the things after a year or so, he's, he's doing some work with Heritage and, and then he decides or has conversations with Judges Guild about publishing his Blackmore material. And so that's the point at which Blackmore gets pulled out of, out of, out of Greyhawk, essentially, out of the Castle and Crusade Society setting. Uh, the Great Kingdom setting, and moved into a new place, and that place is the Wilderlands. Yep. Okay. So in the in this thing, the first fantasy campaign, I can't really do this with the. No, it's only. <laughs> it doesn't work. Yeah. With the. Um, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, thanks, Mike. Uh, that's where the separation is first happens so all of the campaigns that that are if you're a blackmore fan or that you read about in the first fantasy campaign that all that history that happened happened in the same world as greyhawk up to that point at that point arneson isn't doing much with um with the blackmore setting in terms of gaming there's some in uh, i think it's 1980 no 1979, he starts his own company called Adventure Games, and they do a lot of different things. Um, and there is some Blackmore gaming that goes on there. Not much, but some. Okay. And that gets incorporated into the to the TSR setting. So, so the DA the DA books the is DA what you're series. About. The DA exactly. series. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So at that point, Blackmore gets pulled again out of the Wilderlands, which it never really, I don't think, really caught on as a part of that setting, and moved somewhere else. But the whole time, there's been a Blackmore in Greyhawk, yeah. and that never changed. Yeah, so, South of the land of black ice and the northwest of the map, up there, above the wolf and tiger nomads. Right, <laughs> right, yeah. right, right, right. Yeah. Right. So, but there, there are also um, locations like the Egg of Coot and stuff that is mm-hmm. on the older map and are still in Greyhawk, so to speak. Are, are, uh, right. Yeah. Right. So, so, so the any... Egg of Coot. No? So, so, uh, all right. So, let's, go ahead. Let's scroll back a little bit. Yeah. What caught, I don't want any tension, but, or, but what caused the split up? Why did Dave leave TSR? Yeah, that's a good, yeah, good question. So, this is, you know, they, they don't like to talk about that. And I've never pried okay. deeply into it. There was something personal between the there, two. There were we... personal things that happened between yeah. individuals, yes. Wow, Mike, that's awesome to have that, too. Yeah. Okay. But that is kind of when the but first also... time it went out, kind yeah. of. It just what they yeah. didn't talk about it after right. that. Yeah. Even though right. Because kept... right after that, there was a, there was a lot of bad feeling. Yeah. So was Dave an employee of TSR, a part owner of TSR, or how did, was he that? Was, he was still part owner, yes. Okay, yeah. He was a stockholder. Yeah. Um, and that was true for a long time. Uh, okay, yeah. 
And so he would, oh. he would actually send a representative to the stockholder meetings and he wouldn't go, he wouldn't go himself. Yeah. Um, but he, he became an employee. He was an employee for less than a year. Okay. Um, wow. He started early 1976. Uh, I want to say February, but I'm not exactly sure of the month, and was was done before the year was out. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, but he invested in the company and kept that investment for quite some time then. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 And, and, and so, on the on the Greyhawk end, when Gary does the folio. He has to put Blackmore in there because it's been in all of the material in Dragon Magazine. Oh, yes. Yeah. So there was no copyright issue, meaning it was already established that it was, it was already established. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But he couldn't really give details that too many details that. And he couldn't um, steal anything from Dave that wasn't exactly. already published in, in various sources. So it's, it's, and, uh, and again, you know, they're, they're not exactly getting along at this point either. Although things got better as, as time went on and that's how the DA series comes about. But if you notice in the, in the folio, it says the capital of Blackmore is Dan Treden. And that's redundant. Uh -huh. It's a. Um, uh, what do you call it? For anagram. Redundant. Anagram. Thank you. Damn. <laughs> redundant. Redundant. Didn't know that. Oh. Did not know that. Yeah. Damn. That is. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. That I didn't actually notice that myself. It was pointed out. Uh, yeah, might have been yeah. Gary Holian who did that. Uh, pointed it out to me. But yep. Yes. Wow. So oh, when you is, see it, it's like, oh, cool. of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And interestingly, the population was 666, which is yep. not, a, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, eh, okay, I see where you're going. Yeah. I thought that was more like a, a joke or, or something like that. Yeah. But, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but, I mean, I take the position that all of that can be, can be that you can draw on all of those sources, mm -hmm. all of them. Yeah. Because there's but so much space that's... It's not really uh, filled out. That's that's yeah. not explained. That's but a when you, tapestry to draw from. Yeah, but when you see David, David Ernest, the other maps, I haven't read much about the setting or anything. But when you see at the map, it looked like more like a full f uh, featured setting with like the islands, forest, yes. hills, and and all that. So it seems, yep. but yep. but one of the maps I have here says that it's only like 200 miles across. So that actually makes it fit on the Greyhawk map. So they right. haven't even changed the size. It's just that it's much right. more feature rich when you look at the Blackboard material mm -hmm. and not the Greyhawk side yeah. of it. But yeah, yeah, that that map, it jumps through all kinds of scales. So it, yeah. it, could, be, it could be anything. It was okay. the original one yeah. that he drew way back in March of 71 and sent to Rob Koontz has no scale on it ah, all he, okay so you, all you, he ever said about you, it yeah yeah was that ah. it was it was based on an old dutch map but so did it have more features meaning with the elves dwarves and and well, like probably just stuff like that or, or so not originally um there were wizards uh -huh. mentioned in the letter so it was a fantasy setting and it seems to have it feels like just from the, the words that he uses, because he talks about picks and the red wizards, mm -hmm. um, something else. Huh. That it's that the idea is inspired by by Conan. Okay. Uh, yeah. Which he did later talk about being inspired by Conan when he was working on the Blackmore Dungeon. Yeah. Is uh, it set up in the north, meaning it's a cold mm -hmm. Arctic, semi Arctic? Yes. Was that? Okay, Absolutely. That was yeah. Dave's uh, idea from the beginning. He, uh, now th this is a little bit later, say 75 ish. And it's probably some of the material that, so he, he wrote a whole bunch of stuff in the summer of 1975 for what is now Supplement 2 Blackmore that followed Supplement 1 Greyhawk. Yeah. And that's where the in first. The o o D &D. Yeah, in, yeah, in the old O and D, O D and D, 
Tim Kask was the editor editor on that, and uh, Tim Kask and, and Arneson yeah, that's have the one. a very clashing history, <laughs> like from the start. They really, they, you know, huh. um, Anyway, Kask cut a fair amount of of Arneson's material. He said, "Oh well, this isn't this isn't standard or whatever it was," um, and some of that appears to have gotten. In, published in the first fantasy campaign because there's there's some of it that has classes that are from the same time and it's like this is hey like, this was, i want to go to the waste yeah, yeah. um wow. like he wrote this thing called special interest which is all about how you could change the way you give experience by making your people your characters spend money <laughs> on their special interests and that's how they get experience points Huh. That something uh, that carried over into a first edition AD and D. You have to pay your some of it did, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but you know, the, uh, a lot of these ideas get reworked and, yep. and picked up, and mm -hmm. you know, sometimes it's it's hard to trace where it even came from in the first place. But um, in to answer your question, and I'm sorry, and I no, 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 this, this is awesome. Know, I love every word of it. Please continue. Yeah, yeah, in in the first fantasy campaign, there's a section there where he talks about. Um, talks about new settlers coming into the land and what times they'll they will come and when they won't and he says they won't come in winter which is anywhere between october and june okay yeah so it's so, really arctic yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. he'd been to sweden too many times yeah, yeah. well i and i <laughs> you know he was minnesota so oh it, yeah so you see yeah, he, you he know. Know, knows about snow and winter so yep mm -hmm. right Yep. So we had a question from the audience. Uh, Patrick, Canadian Ancient Gamer, asked, uh, who right. owns Black... We're jumping ahead. Who owns the Blackmore rights now? Is Dave's daughter or, or is it Hasbro? She does. Uh, she does. Yes. She does own the rights to um, to his material of Blackmore. Okay. So it's... Comp but... Watsy would own the rights to the published versions of Blackmore, so the DA material, and so this this was so jumping ahead just uh -huh. um, to answer the question essentially in the two thousands, Arneson had become a teacher at a university in Florida called Floor Full Sail, which is a sort of gaming and creative arts university and he hooked up with one of the other professors there named uh, Dustin Klingman to produce a new line of Blackmore stuff for the D20 um, explosion if you will so it's all third edition D20 well not all there's one fourth edition book and the they recycle well recycled is not the right word they used and relied on a lot of the same material that purposed was, a repurposed bit. yeah very good Jay. thanks uh -huh. the material that was in the da series the tsr da series but in order to do that they had to have a license it's so you know Arneson license. could write all he wanted about blackmore but if he wanted to talk about stuff that was specifically published in the in the uh, da series he, they he had to license that from once okay because Big Mac just said, I want to know who owns the rights to reprint First Fantasy Campaign in the three and four E books for Blackmore. It okay, sounds like First, first yeah. Fantasy yeah. Campaign is um, is uh, Malia or Malia, uh, okay. Okay. his daughter. But the three and four E is probably Watsi. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, to reprint them, you would have to get permission was... from both the. Okay. Writer, I, I don't. That would be a nightmare. I don't even think they could do that. Yeah, I thought those were like open game license versions. Yeah, but that the, the, the content within it for rule yeah. set, but the content's not. Yeah, but the rule set and content said, yeah. are two separate things. Exactly. Right. The so, like some of the spells is, yeah. would be open game. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. but, yeah, yeah. but the rest of it, no. Yeah, the mechanics or the the, it's, the crunch. It's just like I can't publish Greyhawk stuff under Osric. Because I don't yeah. own the Greyhawk stuff, but Osric is open yeah. game license. You know, yeah. that's the same yeah. difference. Uh, well, yeah. and, but of course, you can you can publish things for free. That's oh, true. Oh yeah, the fan. You know, if you you're not charging any money policy, for it. Exactly. Then yeah, fan creation policy. Yep. You know, so and I've I've been working on, um, and hope to have out in, oh, uh, by spring I would hope a um, 
a sort of Greyhawk Blackmore gazetteer or, or wow. a resource guide for Wonderful. Greyhawk. Wow. Wow. Drawing yeah. on all the mm -hmm. oh my oh, wonderful that's there, a gift to the community. Which you know that's would yeah. be a totally free fan work kind uh, of thing. Uh, it's no way you can charge money for still, that. Look forward to that. Yep. Yeah, that, that would be unbelievable. So Gary Hulian says, "Yes, techno fantasy setting, Blackmore intentional." Yeah. Well, okay. So the, there's a story behind that too. Um, the Twin Cities was a real hotbed of of um, Want to be designers, maybe you'd say, or mm -hmm. just creative minds. Okay. In in the wargaming scene, and uh, a couple of the guys at Arneson's table were uh, the Snyder brothers, and in particular the older Snyder brother, John Snyder, who's still alive, lives in Harrisburg. Not far. Uh, yeah, not far. Um, okay. He designed and published games with TSR. He published. Um, Oh, what's it called? Uh, it's a space game. Uh, uh, what? Not Gamma World, but uh, um, no, but, yeah, but, but Jim Ward's Alpha, yeah, or... Alpha. Star Frontiers. Alpha? Star. Ugh. Why am I blanking on this? Well, he published a space game with TSR. Um, Star Empires. That's it. Star oh, Star okay. Empires, and there's a. There's another expanded version of that Start. too. Okay. Oh, and hang on a second. Just one thing mm -hmm. for for people people that are not out of states enough. The Twin Cities, I think you mean Minneapolis, St. Paul, Paul, and Minneapolis. Yeah, Sorry. exactly. Yeah, uh, there's some people up, up in Europe and other places. Yeah, no, I yeah. familiar with the right. term. So, yeah. mm -hmm. I should have realized that. No problem. St. Paul and Minneapolis yeah. in Minnesota. Yep. They're mm -hmm. across the river from each other, so it's basically yep. one city. Yep. Um, so John Snyder was part of of Arneson's Blackmore groups, part of his, the wargaming group in general. Um, played in the Bronsteins, and his character he had a couple of different characters, and well, they they all because you know a lot of the characters didn't last long. Some of them did. The one character that probably lasted the longest and is still played from time to time is the Great Svenny. <laughs> and uh, I I did send you a picture. There's, there's yeah, it's the, guy, the hulking picture. guy. Is that, it's yeah. got to be him, right? Who's, uh, who's played by Greg Spenson, who's a really nice man, lives in Florida. It's coming up, yeah. Um, yeah that's anyway. funny. That's a funny name. In the old comeback. And the comeback in. You have to tell stories about that okay. whenever old you feel like. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, yeah, we can't miss that one because it's... Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Okay, so the, the techno aspect to, to Blackmore. They, they weren't really... It wasn't a big thing, but it was a thing. Mm -hmm. um, because John Snyder well, John Snyder was playing uh, Inspector General Snyder which is a you know straight sort of Bronstein kind of a character and then he becomes a fighter and then he becomes um, the, the another fighter called Buzero or Bo Bozero whose shtick is that he's a drunk he's kind of like um, the, the monkey god or whatever that it fights better when he's drunk. A drunken master. <laughs> yeah. Um, so he's he's playing these games and he's into science fiction. So he develops this Star Empires, Star Probe, I think is the other Star Probe, Star Empires um, game that does get published by by TSR. Um, while he's doing that. There initially, it's just a, an outer space war game, but they're also play testing it as an expanded version where they're role playing from planet to planet, and and Blackmore then is considered to be one of these planets or on a planet that's in John mm -hmm. Snyder's universe, and so spaceships oh. crash on Blackmore, and that's where you get some of these stories. There's there's two spaceships that crash. One of them is an avian ship. Yeah, they were real creative. There were like the avians who were the bird people and there were the, the ursines that was Arneson's group who were the bear people in aliens and whatever. Um, the, the bird people 
that never nothing ever comes of that except that there's a cloak of flying that one of the characters gets uh who's the brother of john snyder richard snyder so he becomes the flying monk <laughs> flying um, monk the flying monk and the other spaceship that crashes is the city of the gods becomes the city of the gods right okay is that DA3? DA3. And DA3. the backstory behind that is that uh, okay. Stephen Rochefort, who um, it, Arneson had said to to Rochefort, what do you want to do? I want to I want to set up a, an adventure. And he was in charge of the monks of the swamp. Um, and they had used the monks of the swamp in one of, so what they were doing I should explain this is they weren't just dungeon delving and uh, exploring in the wilderness they were also doing occasional war games because that's what Arneson liked so he would run these dungeon adventures for a while and he said okay the Egg of Coot has launched an invasion you got to call up your armies and we're going to have big battles um, so they did that they did that at least twice for the huh. second and third uh, Egg of Coot invasion. And the first Egg of Coot invasion, it's, it's hard to say exactly what happened there. That might have just been backstory. But, well, anyway. Um, you got to explain the Egg of Coot to everyone. Yeah, I'll get to that. Can you? So, oh, yes. I think he got... <laughs> Hopefully he was on a roll, man. Someone who so can, I'm, I'm getting to the Temple of the yeah. Frog. Yeah. And then we'll get the egg of okay, yeah. So the, the city of the gods, the idea is that, all right, this spaceship crashes right, so somewhere on the plains, which um, are inhabited by these plainsmen, which are essentially the wolf nomads. There, there's Temple of the Frog, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, anyway, spaceship crashes there. One of the survivors is Stephen Rochefort's character. So it was his idea. I want to, I'll play an alien. And I'm going to set up a theocracy in my, in the in the monks of the swamp because he'd already had control as a, as a player in the war game of the monks of the swamp. So he's going to flesh that out. And his idea was, I'll be an alien. And he got that idea from a Star Trek episode, where uh, the, the in the Star Trek episode there was a history professor from Earth who goes to a planet and he's an alien there and he decides to set up this fascist society. Yeah, he sets up. He, 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 yeah, it's uh, it's uh, pa patterns of force. Yes. Or something like that. Yeah, where yeah. where uh, where they uh, yeah they emulate the Nazis and it goes big because someone pour, right, uh, drugs right. him and yeah yeah. So so that's yeah. Rochford's idea is he's going to do that. So so Arnis is great and I got just the thing. He goes out to his mother's uh, garden in the lawn and she's got this ceramic frog, this giant ceramic. <laughs> and pulls that up. He puts that on the table and he says, "There, that's the temple." The temple of the frog. Oh, <laughs> a ceramic frog. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. That easy. It's so cool by, uh, where, where things come from. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so there's that. Now, um, so that's Ooh. that's the how the the sci-fi and the medieval kind of got blended together and, and through those. Yeah. Uh, all right. From. Stephen Rochefort's ideas about his character. It's fu it's yeah. funny how Greyhawk has Exhibition of Barrier Peaks and uh, and the Blackmore mm -hmm. has City of the Gods. So yeah, yeah. yeah, there, yeah. There's a couple, several of these yeah. some parallels is it there. Redundant. Redundant. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. I would assume you know these people, they're talking back and forth. These City guys are all guys. friends at this point. Yeah. I'm assuming that that. Um, you know, Gygax probably heard, oh, is that what you're doing? That sounds like a great idea. Yeah, we should do that too. And then he does Yeah, then he just put it somewhere yeah. else. Yep. Barrier Peaks. Um, oh, that's so cool. Yep. So, uh, who um, knows? I, I don't know. Yeah. City of the Gods is on that Darlene map. I was always mm -hmm. like, what is this? Mm -hmm. So now yeah. I know. I mean, I never knew. It's a it's yeah. it, it's a lot. It's it, it sounds like it's a lot larger of a ship than, than the, the Barrier Peak ship. Well, I mean, if you. If you read the uh, the Rob Koontz account of of his adventure there, um, and you you get some of this from from the Stephen Rochefort's Temple of Frog background too, in in supplement two, the idea is that the spaceship crashes, 
and it tries to repair itself, but it's something messed up about it. So instead of repairing itself, it just expands as a sort of technological nightmare across this nice. place. Huh. <clears throat> hmm. Very so, interesting. So, and it's full of robots that, you know, it self-generates yeah. new robots and um, there's supposedly some crew in stasis and yeah, uh -huh. I mean, it yeah. can be it can be almost anything, and become the setting for the Transformers. <laughs> <laughs> whatever, yeah. yeah, yeah. Whatever you, yeah. Like, All yeah. Right. Whenever you so, feel like you want to insert the comeback in, I want to hear about that. Too. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, maybe I should jump to the egg. Of <coughs> yes. Oh egg yes, of please, coot. please. Egg yeah. of uh, coot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's on this map. It's on this early map. So oh, it's yeah. got to have yeah. some kind of crazy huge importance, right? Yep. It does. In that, um, it's this is all this is almost a story of a young man's pettiness in a way. There it is, egg of coot um, right at the okay. top. Yeah. There's so in 1970 71, Arneson has this massive Napoleonic campaign that's going on, and um, it starts to break down a little bit. And there's a bit of a disagreement between him and one of the other key members of the group. It's about the same age as him, Randy Hoffa. Now, the two of them had worked together on rules. Um, you know, they had collaborated on things. But Randy Hoffa didn't like the way Arneson was running games because Arneson would kind of take sides. Like if somebody was a little less experienced, he would cut him a break or he might, you know, give them a little something to help them out um and or things like that or sometimes arneson would play in the games himself that he was supposed to be refereeing yeah he often didn't like that at all so um <laughs> so he decided to set up his own campaign and uh, there were other people of the group that that wanted to play with him or you know wanted to try to play with both of them so it became a thing so uh, Randy Hoffa um, became immortalized in Blackmore lore as the Ran of Afu, which is a sort of a cyborg character that's listed as one of the ba bad guys. And the, the Ran of Afu serves the Egg of Coot. Now, the egg of coot, Randy Hoffa, when he was, he got together with another player named Greg Scott. For, for the two of them were devising this alternate Napoleonics campaign. And Greg Scott and Arneson in particular, Hoffa and Arneson, they weren't like enemies, uh, but Greg Scott and Arneson kind of became not so friendly with each other for a while. And so Greg Scott became the egg of Coot. Got it. So it has nothing to do with EGG, has nothing to do with e Gary, Gary Gygax at all? No, I don't even think, um, I, I doubt if, if Arneson knew that those were Gary's initials at that point. Okay. Oh, okay. So a lot of people yeah, think it is. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. It's just that you take the GR off of Greg <laughs> and you add an extra O and take the right, S off yeah. and you get egg of coot. So, yeah. All right. It's great to see that the first gamers busted each other's balls. Yeah. Because exactly. that's what we do. I mean, we, yeah, uh, you know, that, Lord exactly. Twall, yeah. we, to yeah. this it's day, crazy. we do it. It's crazy. Literally every place name on these Greyhawker Blackboard maps has some kind of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Story back. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Okay. Uh, so initially, the egg of coot was the big bad guy, and it was never they never fleshed out what that was, and they never really had adventures there. So it always was left as this sort of mysterious thing, um, in the in the region that used to be the land of the red coven. So there were these mysterious sort of wizards there. Land of the Red Coven. Now it sounds like uh, Red Wizards of Thay or Almost. something. Almost. Yeah. 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 Well, there, yeah, the Red Coven and Red Wizards is the phrase that he used in that March letter. So <laughs> it's very Conan-esque. Huh. Um, 
So when he's initially doing that, those are the bad guys. And he sets up the town of Blackmore. And the way that they played at that in those times was that uh, Arneson had a picnic, uh, picnic, a ping pong table in his basement. And that ping pong table is still around. So I, I know people that have played on it. <laughs> I never have, but hopefully someday. Um, they would take butcher's block paper, the brown paper, and spread it out over the table and just draw on it. Mm -hmm. um, and so Arneson, he had this model of a castle that was a real castle, uh, an end scale castle, Branzal in the Alps. He put that on the table and he drew a town around that. And it seems that the town actually matches a model that Bill Hoyt, who's another one of the players, um, has, which is something I've only found out recently. So that that was uh, I did I did a post Never about throw that anything like, out six months ago. It was really yeah. It was, it's super Never, cool. yeah. If you're a DM, don't ever throw any of your sheets out, your notes, any of it ever. Yep. You know, so he's uh, got the town. He's got the castle. The castle has dungeons underneath it, and he went to this restaurant in Chicago. I think it was a medieval themed restaurant, and the name of the restaurant was the Comeback Inn. <laughs> so he put the comeback in in his town mm -hmm. that's that's the story behind the comeback in and what he what he did there was he made it so that it was a magical inn and you couldn't actually leave the inn unless somebody pulled you out yeah so they have somebody standing at the door of the bouncer and when you're ready to leave the bouncer will reach in and pull you out otherwise you can't get out of the place so just oh, so so, cool. yeah. so it's thankful that there weren't dry erase markers and those those by back then because they may have been using them and just erasing it instead they had to hand write everything out and now there's yeah. a record and it exists yeah. Yeah. so um there's going in chat what so is it surmise what the egg of cute is we got to go back to that is it an alien intelligence is it a hive mind or is it just that's just speculation um well later on so in the first fantasy campaign, it's it's the, the way it's worded. It seems like it's an alien intelligence or some sort of a sentient machine or something like that. And later on, John Snyder developed an, an expansion of the the egg of coot idea that Arneson approved of, um, and the secrets of Black Mortar folks have that material from Mr. Snyder. And hopefully we've been talking about uh, putting some of it together so that it can, you know, get out there to the public. But Ooh, um, mostly it's maps, although there's more to it than, I mean, I've, I've seen some of the maps and um, Griff Mor Griffith Morgan, who's the, the director there says, well, I got a whole box of stuff. I don't even know what's in there. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Sounds, sounds familiar, Anna, with uh, Len, right? Yeah, but, yeah, I have several boxes and stuff yeah. here with stuff. So, yep. Um, so, and, and John had said that his idea was that it's an alien intelligence. Okay. You know, um, sort of an alien AI that's that's gone crazy essentially and stuck and can't move because it's just this little thing doesn't have any body. So but there's yeah. So there's a lot of uh, crossover between D and D, and I know Gary hates it, but uh, crash spaceships and alien intelligence yeah. throughout, yeah. throughout both settings early on. Yeah, yeah, you know, but there was, there was, there, there was plenty of play that had none of that. You're probably experimenting. Medieval yeah. fantasy, and um, there was also some games that had. I don't know if you'd call it a time travel element so much as as maybe dimension travel where they would go into or cross over into world war ii a world war ii setting so the great spenny um and this is actually written up in one of the early um um before the dragon magazine they had the the um well they had the magazines that they put out before Dragon Magazine. Somebody in chat will remember this. I'm talking too much. It's, oh, uh, um, it's awesome. Yeah. Uh, complete, not complete strategies. Something like uh, yes, complete yeah. strategies. Yes, that in those. Yeah. 
Um, strategic review. Strategic review. Strategic review. That's thank it. you. Thank you, Amy. That's it. Yeah, and thank you, Lonely. Thank you. One of those they talk about having gone into um, uh, essentially a World War II setting, and and they end up coming back with the tank, um, and well, some of them get uh, killed. And so forth. Every and there's also the Artisan now. talks about uh, undead Japanese submariners at some point. This would have been really late in the campaign, which is a, is a cool idea that I've used in some of my games. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so the, you know, there's, there was crossover into various things. It was never just pure. Uh, medieval fantasy, but at the same time, a lot of it was straight up medieval fantasy. And I guess back then things weren't as established. Meaning back then you, they experimented a lot because they were right. the ones creating it. They didn't have yeah. much to fall back to. Now we have almost fifty years of what, yeah, like fifty years of tradition to fall back on. Yeah, almost. So, yeah. so that means that the traditions have been set now. They were everything were in flux then. So sure. Sure, yeah. and I I don't fault anybody for saying, "Oh, I don't want spaceships in my game." No, it's up yeah, to have whoever wants to have it. Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't mind having a, a little something here and there, you know, where it's as long as it stays exotic. And oh, you know, what is uh -huh. this thing? Yeah, yeah and, and that's it. As a DM, you have to make a decision on the, on the level exactly. of, and, of and, it. Exactly, and and yeah, so. DM should run the game. The, yeah. they want and what they think their players want. So right. think, as Absolutely. long as they yeah. try to do that, I think it's great. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, um, I guess they made nice at some point. I don't know if I'm jumping ahead and, uh, and then um, the DAs come back. You know, the if DA just, series. Yeah. So, uh, early 80s, I think there was a point at which, if I recall correctly, Gygax had lost the company and then gotten the company back. I think that was the situation. And the, what I can say is that around 84, Arneson wanted to wind down uh, his the company that he was running, Adventure Games. And the reason he gave for that was, that, well, I got tired of running a company. Um, but if you look at his life at that point, he was very involved with his church. He um, had just gotten married and they just got a kid. So, I, and his, his wife didn't want anything to do with the, their war gaming or their fantasy uh -oh. gaming or yeah. any of that. So I think that explains why he yeah. kind of let adventure games go. But he kept writing, he was doing freelance, freelance writing and he he approached or was approached by, I don't know which, uh, Mayfair Games. And in an interview, he said, oh, I'm, I'm doing these Chronicles of Blackmore for Mayfair Games. And this is, I think, a around, right around 1985. I'm sure that, um, that Gary must have heard about that. And he reached out to Dave and said, hey, why are you going with them? Why don't you bring it to TSR and you know we can we can do it right. So that's what they did, and that's what resulted in the in the four DA series modules. Now, I think what happened was that Arneson had all this material that he had started to put together for these Blackmore Chronicles. I think that consisted of a lot of character write-ups, a lot of setting and material, maybe some adventure ideas and so forth, um, a layout of the comeback in, things like that. And he sent that to David Ritchie at TSR, who was the staff writer. And it was David Ritchie who then took all this stuff and along with his wife and uh, Bruce Hurd, okay. crafted the, the DA series. And Arneson didn't really have a lot to do with what they did with what he sent in. So the whole, they decided that, now you might think, well, we can, it's Blackmore, so we could put it in the Greyhawk setting, but that's not what they were doing with, with new material at that time. They were putting it into the known worlds or Mystara. Right, okay. I mean, that's what Except it, it didn't really fit. Again. Yeah. So they decided, well, we'll, We'll put this in Mastara, but 
the way we'll do it is we'll make it a, a time travel adventure. <laughs> because it doesn't fit the current setup, we'll set it whatever it was, 3,000 years in the past, and then you can do whatever you want if you're setting something in the past. So that's what they did. So that that aspect of the adventure uh, wasn't wasn't anything that Arneson did. Okay. But just there was a workaround to put it in the Mistara setting, yeah, basically. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So there was four publications. Mm -hmm. to Three more of like which Arneson has credit for, and the fourth one is totally uh, Richie's writing. Which is um, which is the Duchy of Ten, right? Okay, right. And that one, Arneson apparently wasn't very happy with. Um, why I, you know, he, I think he didn't like it's. It is very different from the Duchy of Ten in Greyhawk. In the great, yeah, and and the way you see it in the first fantasy campaign, okay. in the first yeah. fantasy campaign booklet, the Duchy of Ten is more of a wild. Uh, there's nomads there, and there's um, right because the cover has a ship on it, which means it's on the ocean somewhere, right? It's on it's on the coast, right? It is. It's connected to the yeah. It's uh, connected to by the bay to the ocean, right? And uh, yeah, okay. So, um, Agax right. fail. It's, <laughs> it's different. It's different feel than than what and and i i don't it's hard it's really hard to know how much of the da series was new material that richie put in there i mean some of it you can tell right away especially in the character write ups it's it's like okay yeah that's straight out out of arneson's campaigns and then other things like well did he have you know he had the the peshwa which were the no, the horse nomads but the afridi okay maybe and these other characters might have been based on on some of these. You just don't know. There's no way to at this point there's really no way to 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 separate it out. But it's still all pretty cool. So is that the end of publications on Blackmore? No. Um so there's the D twenty era stuff, which was mostly written by uh writers that that Dave Arneson and Dustin Klingman a writing team that they hired. Um, and some of those guys are still around doing Blackmore stuff. Tad Kilgore, who who wrote a book called The Writers of Hack, which is great. If you're if you're looking to flesh out um, any of the either the horse nomads, tiger nomads, with some just to to bring those in more detail to those um, settings or those um, the writers populations. The Riders of Hack is a great source for that. Wow. Um, you, know, you can cool. work a lot of that stuff right over. Um, but that was written by Tad Kilgore, who he has a, uh, uh, I think it's a Twitch channel, and he does, he runs Blackmore games, and they're posted on YouTube. Really? Yeah, and, but they're the, they're the later, so the next, so you have you have the Greyhawk Blackmore, you have the Wilderlands Blackmore, you have the Mastara Blackmore, it's ported into Mastara. Then you have the Dustin Klingman Arneson um, 3.5 era D20 Blackmore that's really just set up as, a, as an independent place or it's not, it's, there's no greater world that it's connected to. So you could put that stuff anywhere. But that Blackmore is much more developed and it may be more developed than than some people want or it may be exactly what some people want but it's you know Blackmore goes from being a village to a city for example oh, um, yeah. it's so it's but it's still there's I look at, at it all as source material as inspirational material for whatever it is that I, that I want to do and I, I prefer to 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 run a a Greyhawk Blackmore where it's, you know, it's a northern climb. There's a scattered small villages, a few walled cities, that kind of thing. That sounds Conan-esque. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Uh, which is cool. Which is cool. It's got that uh, Hun almost feel to it. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, or the uh, horse archers and the uh, cataphracts of, uh, of Armenia and that kind of style feel. To yeah. It. Right. So, um, right. But this is, uh, it, I never heard of the Riders of Hack 
till tonight. It's the first time I've yeah. heard of it, which is great. That's awesome. I'm sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say that, that that I have a timeline that that I worked out, and it's based on the idea. There's the Earth Journal write up of um, Blackmore and Greyhawk by Fred uh, uh, Weining. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And he talks about the current Baron, the Arch Baron, being born in the year 540. Best and the egg of Coot wins finally after all those invasions. He <laughs> finally wins and conquers Blackmore Village, but pretty much stops there or Blackmore City, I guess it would be at that point. So you've got this standoff between the egg of Coot's forces and the, the arch baron at Dantreden. And depending on when you set that, if he's born in 540, Jay, by the time, you know, you're what, 623? Yeah, something like that, yeah. yeah wow, you know that. That's amazing, dude. <laughs> yeah, so you would need, I would think there'd be a new guy at, at that point, but. Um, oh, you never know. He could be a lich. Everyone's a lich. Yeah, it could be. Madness. He could be, because there's plenty of those around, too. <laughs> yeah. um, and then there's the crowns of Blackmore, which True. he talks about in that. And so there's a story behind that. Wow. Uh, if, you, if you've ever looked at Rob Koontz's El Raja Key archive, he's got a lot of stuff in there. One of the things he has is a discussion of three crowns. And oh, he's also got a note in there where he talks about Blackmore, um, Taunus Borg, Greg Svensson, and then he says Blackmore Robilar. Yeah. Okay. Like, wow. Okay. Well, he's I Robilar. guess Robilar could have been in charge. Of, you know, who knows? Um, well, anyway. I, I have a feeling that that is like I have this character in Greyhawk. I'm going to port him in. I mean, because mm -hmm. we used to do that when we were kids too. Oh, I mm -hmm. have this character. I'm just going to use him in your campaign too. If he gets dies there, I still have him in the other campaign. I mean, mm -hmm. that's kind of probably what happened there. You know. He's, oh what oh what's that? Oh, the Raja key hit. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There you go. Like you got some real, you got some real great goodies there. Man. <laughs> Mike's got the best yeah. stuff. Yeah. I'm a collector, but you know I've I've looked at this a couple times and uh, unwisely have not. What is really... that? Looks like a DVD cover a case. It's a. It's, yeah, yeah. It's a. It's a little hard to navigate, and you. I mean, it's not hard to navigate, but you you basically just have to kind of click through everything to see what's there. Oh, okay. So I haven't yeah. really made much use of it, uh, but like I said, I'm a collector. And if you don't have that, there's a lot of cool maps in there. Oh, cool. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. you can show me sometimes, Mike. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Here and, and click around. Um, yeah. So the three keys, yeah. or three crowns, rather. Um, the, Rob Koontz has those. Then they show up again in the three little booklets as artifacts. And they show up in Taunusborg Dungeon, which is Greg Svensson, the Great Svenny's mm -hmm. Dungeon. Um, and we're working on publishing that. So that's, that should be out soon. Wow. But these- That's there's... that Regalia of Evil comes from, or no? No, I don't, well, I don't oh. think so. Okay, no, I, I was just coming mm -hmm. top of yeah. my head here. So, yep. Mm -hmm. So, but there's these three crowns in Taunusborg Dungeon. And then you've got the Earth Journal mention of the crown of Blackmore. I think it might be also in From the Ashes or something like that. Okay, yeah. Um, so it's gotta be one of those. There's there's like this thread that you can just weave through yeah. all of this mm -hmm. material. Yeah. Amazing, wow. amazing stuff, man. Um, this is so much more connected. This, oh, yeah. this is fantastic. All right, so how did you become involved in the movie? Uh, uh, through my blog, <laughs> actually. The uh, the director read some of my blog posts and said, and reached out to me and said, "Wow, you really know what's going on here. Can you um, can you look at some of our stuff and tell us what you think?" So that that began a sort of constant conversation and friendship since then. So, yeah, I, I 
And that was a movie that actually came to be because I yeah. reached to a, a, a no. Kickstarter of another D and D documentary, and and they reached out to me and said, "Oh, Rob Koontz is coming to L.A. and 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 we love your maps and stuff. Can you come down so we can yeah. use it as a backdrop and stuff?" So so I spent two days with Rob Koontz and the production team down in L.A. Nice. when they were shooting, and yeah. and we played D and D with Rob Koontz with the in the evening, and we had a lot of fun, and then um, took like six, eight months and they started having a feud and then it just unfolded together and nothing oh. happened of it. So, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's kind of the the boon yeah. and the bane of Kickstarter. Yeah, but I got it wonderful. I got to meet Rob Coons for a couple of days and we had fun playing D&D and we looked at some of the collectors down in the LA, LA area that, that have way too much money to spend on gaming and stuff. And and yeah, so, so it was fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But nothing yeah. came We're, out of it. So, yeah. The case with the Secrets of Blackmore, the, is they didn't they didn't go the Kickstarter route until the very end. Ah, yes. Privately financed, which I yep. mean, they were lucky enough to have have someone who had enough money to be able to to do that. Not that it was you know they were on a shoestring budget, but that's really the only way. Yeah. Only way they were able to do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I like I I did a lot of work for them, and I. I wasn't on a payroll or anything. I get nothing oh. out of it. It's just my pleasure to. It's the honor. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. So is that movie on Amazon Prime? You said, or or where can I think, you, yes, you yeah, it, it is on Amazon Prime it? and uh, okay. and Vimeo. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Yep. yep. Like more secrets. Yep. All right. So you've said multiple things are being coming out. Who is bringing it out? You and who? Do you have a coalition of a certain amount of people or? Uh, the Taunus Borg book. So the, the story behind that is um, Dave McGarry, again, the guy behind Dungeon, had a set of maps that he brought to Griffith Morgan, the, um, the director of the movie. Mm -hmm. And he said, I've got these historic maps. I don't know what they are. They're just in a box that I'd had from when I moved out of Boston. <laughs> And um, Griff sent scans of them to me, and I, I looked at it. And I'm like, you know, this looks a lot like Blackmore Dungeon. And I'll bet, I'll bet you anything, this is the the lost maps of Taunusborg. Oh my! Taunusborg was so Greg Svensson, and he was again. You're talking uh, an 18 year old kid, basically. In in 1973 late summer, drew up a, an imitation, if you will, of Blackmore Dungeon, because he played it so much, he knew. He knew it by memory. <laughs> and Blackmore Dungeon, I, I mean, you know, you, they, people talk about genius or whatever, and um, one thing I can say about Arneson is Blackmore Dungeon is one of the most complex dungeons I have ever seen, and it was the first one ever made. It's just amazing. There's so many staircases that go between levels and, and uh, connections. Not, and not just one way down. That's one of the good ones. Just multiple ways. Yeah, right. That's, that's right, awesome. Right. It's, yeah. it's, it's unfortunate it's been sort of poorly presented over the years. It's really hard to follow. I mean, I spent like six months lining everything up in, in GIMP to try to figure out, okay, that's how it works. But um, anyway, so it's the same thing with Taunus Board. So we reached out to Greg Spence in... in in Florida and said, Hey, Greg, is this your, are these your maps? And he's like, Hey, those are my maps. I haven't seen those for 30 years. Wow. wow. Um, so, and the story was, the story was uh, that in early 74, Dave McGarry went to Boston and he took with him a copy of, of Taunus Borg that um, is, Greg had done had created the dungeon in late 73, and this was before the rules were published. And then it must have been right around the time the rules were published, he updated the stocking list. And I can tell that because of the contents and what's in it and what's not in the old version. <laughs> but I won't get into that. Uh, and he gave a copy to Dave McGarry to run while he was in Boston. And there's actually a letter that Dave McGarry wrote to Gary Gygax where he talks about having Taunus Borg and running it in, in Boston in 1974. So it's really cool. <sighs> McGarry moves from Boston after a couple of years, 
puts his stuff in a box and goes in his parents' house. That's it. A couple of years later, he and Greg Spenson both move back to Boston. Greg gives him, at this point, his original hand-drawn maps of Taunusborg Dungeon to run, or to, photoc to photocopy, I'm sorry, because uh, McGarry had, he was working at a photocopy shop. Cold now, the ones then. that he had previously were photocopies right. that were in a right. box sitting in his parents' house. But these were the originals. He, he got home from work or class or whatever he was doing. I should let him tell the story mm -hmm. rather than secondhand from me. But he stuck the things inside a magazine because he thought they'd be safe there and left that. it sitting on the coffee table. Oh. And he slept in the next morning. He was in some kind of a dorm where there was a cleaning lady. Oh, just clean out all the magazines. Papers. Yeah. Gone forever. That's what they thought. They just thought it was gone. And then here, you know, what was like 2016 or something, he's digging around. He finds this old box that, he, that he'd had from his first trip to Boston and finds these maps in there. Didn't know what they were. Didn't remember it. It's been too long. And, but that's how it was rediscovered. So, so we had that and we found the key for it and we we put all that together. And, and yeah, that's, that's fortunate. it's all done. It's just in layout right now and they're talking to the printers. And, yeah. um, so what they did was they, they set up um, a limited print run that helped fund the film as a Kickstarter. And then I think there's gonna be another limited print run and then eventually maybe a more general distribution in this sort of a, a, a less expensive format. But yeah, it's, Donisborg is coming out and then hopefully the Egg of Coop material will materialize. And there's a couple of other dungeons from some of these guys that were done a little later, um, but there's, you know, it's still really cool, like first edition material. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's out there and it's just been sitting in people's, you know, closets. And we we hope to um, we hope to rescue it from oblivion, but that's the so the secrets of Blackmore guys are are okay working on publishing this, some of this stuff. You know, they're yeah. they're sort of transitioning into a publishing company, but they do they do still help hope to have a follow up documentary where they they go sort of into the next steps and tell more of the stories, the gaming stories, and what happened in the. The, the next couple of years of, of uh, the early days of D&D. So. Oh, that is close. that's awesome. Yep. Ah, uh, man, it's a shame. It's a shame that we didn't pick Len's brain more on that early, early stuff. Uh, oh, yeah. We got a yeah, lot but, of information piecemealed yeah. all over the place where he oh, would yeah, draw a random... Oh, yeah, but he didn't want to say much. And, and, and even it came out of the blue. Him, yeah, right, and right. And I, I did... Yeah. I emailed him a couple of times on Castle and Crusade yeah. stuff, and I got like one second or one sentence answers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, so. that's the thing. When, when I talked to him, and I talked to him like at least six, seven times on 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 Skype mm -hmm. and Zoom, or, on private too. And he wanted me. He had wanted a, a, a special version of my map for for him, for him, so he could work on. So we did mm -hmm. on that. And I asked him question, mm -hmm. and he was like, "Yeah," mm, and he was very. He didn't say much, so to yeah. speak. So that was the yeah. moment. And, and most of his material is stat blocks and stuff. So, but there yeah. are some text in between here and there. But most of them are things that he wrote for dragon magazine and other stuff so so but i'm th there there are some tidbits here and there i'm, I'm sure there's so much material yeah. most of it and the, the other sad part is that most of it is actually printouts if we got it at in files to begin with would have been awesome fun but yeah but we don't have the computers so so that's the thing so yeah yeah wow um yep. so what is next like, <laughs> Is it a plan? Uh, they have a plan of just, you know, piecemealing this all out. Is there something, you know, still, is there any, is there material that's missing too? Is there stuff that yeah. they are looking for to this day? Is there a map or another dungeon or another, you know, something oh. else? I'm, I'm just curious. You know? Yeah, no, there's that, like, um, there's, well, for example, in the FFC, there's, um, a small dungeon called Glendower Dungeon. There's maps for it and a really partial key. Okay. There had to be more. There's, there's, yeah, there's stuff that's probably gone forever, but who knows? 
who knows yeah. what yeah you know, i know that some people have boxes of things oh. i don't know what's in them um and i know that there's uh, collectors out there who have things that you know they don't share which is unfortunate um there is there was an an ebay I mean, and I don't know how much information you gleaned from this, but there was uh, an eBay auction six, seven years ago of the original manuscript for the D8 uh, material. So before it was all edited out, they had they put together sort of one big, and I don't, it may have just been for DA1, I don't know, uh, but that no doubt had, you know, parts in it that, uh, hit the cutting room floor it would be interesting to see somebody bought that i don't know who i've never heard nobody's ever said hey here's a pdf of what was in there which is you know it's it's unfortunate but time will tell um yeah. and and i know that that there are some things that are archived that that haven't been released and um some things you know you hear rumors about or get information that you're not really at liberty to talk about so there there are things and eventually i think everything comes to light that that still exists or at least i hope so well it sounds like uh you've been extremely thorough with everything which is yeah. really appreciated um, hmm. because um there's a lot of uh, you know there's a lot of I've learned a lot tonight. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you that I just, the, the, yeah. The virtue not... of you seeing your real world skills in, in your D and D stuff. Yeah. So it's it's awesome. Yeah. 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 And so, I if if there's a takeaway I that that I would want people to have, it's that there's a lot of stuff out there that you can you can pick and choose from and and use for yeah. inspiration or yeah. Or draw on directly. It's there. It's might as well. Yeah, and it, since we've played and, and been in this hobby and, and for, for decades, it's so wonderful to hear more what it, where it came from and, and mm -hmm. the stories behind it and stuff. And it's, it's yeah, it's that part is just amazing. And, and make sure that <clears throat> these stories kind of can continue. And, and mm -hmm. so, so new generation D&D &D gamers and role players can go sure. back and see, oh, that's where it comes from. So it doesn't right, die with right. this generation. Because now it's the, now we're at the time where the original people are starting to, to be starting to lose them. And soon we will lose yeah. the next generation and stuff. So, so the new generation gamers will be like the fourth generation gamers coming. So, so yeah. and, and a few of them will be interested in where it came from. So. So, right, right. Well, probably most people aren't. But, but, oh yeah, but some yeah. are, you know. And it's like, yeah, some of them. I mean, are, I, yeah, really interesting. So yeah. When I was a kid, and I and I saw that, you know, Dave Arneson on the box, I said, you know what? Who is yeah. that guy? What, what's mm -hmm. a, what is? Yep. And when I saw the, but you did the ten pro, times or a hundred times more than yeah. Any, yeah. all of us else. And and but yeah. that's the good thing in this hobby. There's so many who have different meaning. My my passion is maps, and I try to put skills mm -hmm. and, and put the geographical into it. But it's wonderful to to have so many different aspects of it that can kind of complement each other, and we can kind of build a, a bigger picture of it. It's it's fantastic. Yeah. 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 So what? Well, um, yeah. Daniel, what, uh, what would you like to say uh, in closing or any other of the things you want to point out that we really didn't discuss? I mean, you know, feel yeah. free. Feel free to run with some things or, you know, be, I really appreciate you coming on tonight. It's been fantastic. Oh, yeah. This is, oh, yeah. I really said awesome. not, not much. Yeah, 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 definitely. It's great to we discuss. We didn't have to say anything. We've been yeah. <laughs> like spellbound by so many cool, yeah, stories coming here that, that, yeah, that absolutely. we needed, yeah. wanted to hear. Yeah. Um. So what are your next steps in, in this, yeah. so to speak, or, or in future? Meaning, do you think like the research is done or do you think like there will no. be years oh, of stuff I've, you, yeah. I've got a ton of stuff that I need to write on the blog and I never have mm -hmm. time to do it. Yeah. I mean, um, I mentioned uh, the Snyder brothers. Richard Snyder put together a set of rules that he um, mimeographed or whatever, right at the same time that that Gygax was writing D and D. Oh, geez. Um, and I've put out like maybe two articles about that, and um, I, I re it's complicated. So you have to trace a lot of threads, and it's spent oh, a lot yeah. of time writing it. So yep. I, need, I need to to do some more of that, and yeah. hopefully we'll be able to 
that that's going to be one of the things that I hope will be published. Um, you know, there's so few people that have eyes on that right now. I, I have this, I have the set, but it's not like I can just, I can't in good conscience release things without knowing for sure that whoever the, the, the Richard Snyder's no longer alive, but he has heirs and, you know, yeah. these right. things have to be dealt with. Yeah. Um, that, that's the good, yeah. That's the good thing we get with Len now because we have Len's mm -hmm. partner, or Len's husband. We have his blessing, and he was the one handy. First, we have Len himself mm -hmm. saying that we should have it, and then we have Len's husband also giving it us access right. to it. So that that is kind of gives us yeah. a, a good yes. firm standing legally and and so on to to start digging into yeah. this and 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 so on. And it was both Len's and 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 Gary's wishes that we Gary's Len's husband that that we should mm -hmm. make sure that this could be available to to the D, &D community so yeah yeah so so there's there's that and uh there's i have development notes from uh, one of artisans uh the adventures and fantasy game th th to talk about and um dave Mc working on stuff with dave mcgarry so there's there's all these sort of things and of course i you know i got I got three girls in school and okay. I got a full-time job. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm sure Jay knows all about how, you know, balancing those. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Tell me about it. It's uh, but that's part of the fun. Yeah. I mean, you know, I think you and I and everyone involved in the community are doing, uh, um, you know, mm -hmm. we're not going to get rich off of doing this. We're going to do, no. do this because we love uh, the, love the yeah. game and we love, yeah. uh, you know, the, growing the community. And this has another, been another huge, uh, huge discussion tonight toward that. Uh, yeah. Get some real old, old um, aspect of what was going on in the late 60s, early 70s, you know, mm -hmm. stuff I, mm -hmm. you know, I was 72, yeah. I was five. You know, it's just... Uh, Yep. It, it is. Yeah. It's a labor of love, Patrick. Exactly. You know. Yep. Right. Yep. Right, yep. Right, Definitely right. was a um, something to and consider. I just, I just love seeing it all. It all come together. You know. All, there's no reason to. There's, there's all this heritage from all of these guys, from Gary Gygax, from Rob Koontz, from Dave Arneson, from his buddies, from all of that. And we have the privilege of being able to incorporate all of these things in our gaming world. And it, you know, just it, it's, it's richness. It's heritage. It's and it's fun so awesome so uh coma 808 asks do we talk dave arneson's blackmore book from goodman games mm -hmm. Reco that's the the uh, 3.5 that's 3.5 okay stuff. yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. the best way to think about that stuff is, is it's, it's sort of blackmore evolved into a, a you go uh, it goes from if you just look at this the town itself it goes from being a village to a city and the, the whole setting is like that it, it's expanded and um okay made bigger you know um so that's your choice whether you want to play it that way or okay. the, the way I, I handle it in my games is that once the egg coot actually finally wins <laughs> in 540 why <laughs> that stuff is all ruins now but uh, you know However you want to do it. So you're you're DMing mm. in that area mm -hmm. for a group of how many? Um, just four, and we we do it virtually when we can. Okay. Uh, there there was more, but we, yeah, you know how groups go. They, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They um, come so, and go. Yeah. Yeah. What edition? Yeah. What edition? O D and D. O D. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Classic. Oh, yeah. You bet. See, uh, even I, now you're new school, Jay. You, you, you <laughs> yeah. See, there's oh some old Yeah, that newfangled school. stuff you do. Huh? <laughs> exactly, meaning Jay. You see, there are some old, <laughs> more old school than the old school is. Yep. Yeah. This is awesome. Yep, yep, yep. Yep. Oh, my yep. gosh. OTD. Mm -hmm. that, yep. mm -hmm. that is great. Using those old booklets. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, um, I put together a, a set of rules. It was called uh, Champions of Zed, and that's pretty much what we. It's, okay. But it's ODD, &D, you know, okay. like house rules. And what, what I did was I incorporated <laughs> a lot of Arneson and Gygax's house rules into the original rules. <laughs> is long story short. So, yeah. Uh, nice. Yeah. How long has that been going on for? Well, it depends because half of the members have been there for about five years and some of them just a year and a half. Okay. It's still so right before COVID, really. Yeah. So we yeah. Had a few yeah. games and we met in person once this summer. 
um, the right. game, and then we we've done a couple online since. So it's been it's been tough. It has, you know, for a lot of people, yeah. it's uh, yeah. it's definitely been a challenge. Wow. Well, I appreciate what a yeah what yeah a this discussion. Was, thank you so much for coming on and, yeah, and sharing all this yeah. with us. This is this Amazing. is wonderful, and I think that a lot of people in, in chat. Um, yeah, everyone's really, just like really blown away by it. Yeah. By no, I, I'm sorry, I haven't even been looking at chat at all. No. no, but yeah, and and yeah, it's it's kind of yeah, it's just yeah, well, we have a lot so, of viewers, and 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 it's wonderful. This is the, yep, yeah, this is absolutely. the content they like too. Yeah. It's, I, it's us three been babbling so often, so it's a wonderful thing. <laughs> come here and, and and they can they can hear from people who are experts. It's it's fantastic. Yeah. So uh, why don't we hit some shout outs real quick here? And uh, yeah. um, Daniel, is there anything else you want to like uh, talk uh, chat about or talk about or shout out that's going on in the community or going on that you you know want to you know someone hey this is a great game this person plays or you know anything like that just you know, let me you know, sure let you want to shout out for yeah. I, I love the fact that you have uh hooked up with troller games and and so much of that stuff is coming out and thank you uh, luke gygax uh writing his material for that is, yeah, more yeah the 5e yeah, just got released more things yeah that's yeah. totally awesome so it's ironic. I think Stephen Chenault did, named it Castles and Crusades in honor of that original setup. Sure. Right? You know, yeah. that's yeah. where it came mm -hmm. from, you know? Yeah. Yep. So, uh, and yep. And right here, Venture, we're on 898. Nice. Adventure number 900 will be a Castles and Crusades uh, game based at place in a gnarly verdant rage. So yep. there you go. Cool. Putting that right in the Greyhawk. Um, excited about it. Plus, yep. there's some great terrain coming too from Bill. So, well, cool, Daniel. Thanks, and uh, yeah. oh, thank you. Oh, um, Mike, what's what's going on in your world, man? Uh, well, uh, if you go on the blog, Greyhawkery, um, oh, I found a. Link that up. I linked to uh, a um, Battle of Emerald Meadow song that someone did a song? and posted on. Wow. Yeah, they posted it on. Um, yeah, this guy's Australian. Campfire. Well, I don't know much about the background, but uh, yeah. check that out. That was really entertaining. I, uh, I'm always constantly surprised by uh, some of the content people put out there in the community. And like music is one thing I've never really dabbled in. I could probably write lyrics. I've done a lot of parody stuff, but this is uh, this is kind of a cover song parody. I enjoyed it. So check that out. I think he commissioned yeah. this person to do this song, and it's pretty good. It's pre it's it is really good, definitely a great great one. Yeah, the yeah. one based on the Edmund Fitzgerald song. Yeah, definitely. Right. Yep, absolutely, Amy. Other than that, I've been tinkering around with uh, deity stuff a lot. So I think my next post might have something to do with deities. Cool. So. Well, if anyone sees Dennis uh, Malden, not Denise Malden from Saturday Night, as that was a comedy, uh, everyone thought, "Oh, you spelled Dennis's name wrong." I'm like, no, this is <laughs> this is someone, uh, this is someone yeah. else. So, uh, um, but uh, she was awesome. Dennis. Yeah, yep. uh, Dennis owes uh, Dennis owes us a Gavin on Specialty Priest still and Deity. So, yep. uh, uh, mm. Mike, we, we definitely got to get that one cranking out too. Um, absolutely, that would be awesome, though, Dave. I mean, listen to me. Uh, my brain just, you ever have that? Your brain just shut off. Mine just Especially shut off. Especially when you're off. supposed to Mike, say something. Absolutely, yeah. So, um, but Mike, that would be really cool. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, is your game going? Mike, you playing your game? Uh, I'm playing. That's good. But uh, no Greyhawk right now. Ah, uh, uh oh. Ravenloft? Yeah. Dragonlance? Uh,. Rooms. Ooh, ooh, okay. Well, um, I have the next two guys. If, if, if I said this once, I've said a hundred times. I write about Greyhawk. I DM Greyhawk, but right. like ninety percent of my playing experience is forgotten rooms. Yeah, I'm the same way. I play prefer to play in other <laughs> games yeah. that are not Greyhawk, except for Jay and and Carlos. I guess are the exceptions. And well, that's in that nice. Way. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's yeah. published for Rooms too, so it's yeah. kind of harmless. 
Yeah, but I like to play in 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 other things that I don't know much about because that way mm. I can be ooh and odd and, right. and and don't know and and be like, oh, that's wrong. That's not the way I should do it. So yeah. the less I know about a setting, is often the better as a player. Yeah, well, you don't want to you don't want to play in a module that you've read. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. any of you, and this is not a slap down on Greyhawk, but but um because you know I would never do that. But if you, if you, uh, and I'll talk about this during shout outs, if you already don't know, the next two Gabins are going to have a lot of Forgotten Realms talk. Mm -hmm. The next two. So uh, uh, we'll talk about that after, uh, after Anna. Anna, what is up with you? What's going um, on? I ordered um, um, it's a document scanner so I can uh, start digging through all the lens stuff so I can scan it more effectively. So that will come in a couple of days. So then I will set up and, and, and take at least a day a week and hopefully a, a couple of days a week and, and sit and, and take a whole day and just scan through and, and put them in Dropbox or Evernote or somewhere first so we, so we have that secure. And then we have to figure out where to share it and, and, and yeah, make it accessible to people. So it's, it's coming. That part is coming. And also the setup for the new generation Greyhawk maps. The first article is on my Patreon blog and it's going, it's been a bit, a bit kind of a few little hiccups. That's nothing unexpected. It's always hiccups when you set up a, a new huge project to map a whole continent, so to speak. So there were a few things I realized that, ah, oh, I need to, to tweak this and that, but it's looking like um, I have the, the, the final setup, so to speak. And, and it's, I've decided to take it. Now I'm going to get two minutes of map technical. I'm going to do it in two steps. One will be the, the actual elevation, the base elevation, and that will be done at 10 feet. In, in resolution, or maybe even 20 Oops, feet in I some areas. That. Oh yeah. So, I, so, I just did that, my bad. Okay, yeah. So, so like, yeah, so 20, between 10 and 20 feet in, in resolution per pixel. And so I can cover larger areas and that's to get rivers and lakes to, to match up because otherwise the, the, the drainage of large continents is kind of a tricky thing. That's the most tricky thing at all. To, to do when you when you kind of virtually create a terrain or large area terrain so to get that covered and then I will render that in in that resolution and then bring it back in again for texturing biomes to tell what's polar what's temperate and stuff like that and then bring the resolution down to five feet per pixel or even better in some areas <laughs> So, and then, and then work on the textures and stuff. So, so I'm working on the first level of it and the results are looking, yeah, spectacular, so to speak. It's, it's going to be super, super cool. It will be, it will, this is, I'm, I'm doing the setup on my campaign area that I'm working on in, in Shieldlands and I'm going to run a new session on Sunday. And I know some of my players are in, in chat, so I'm really looking forward to it. And I'm sorry I haven't been chatting as much with my campaign group or game group during this because there's been so many other things going on that hasn't to do with my maps. But we all know that there's politics and there's a whole bunch of other things happening. So, so, so I've been a little bit distracted with other things that has nothing to do with maps. But now I'm back again. So, so that is looking good. And there will be another one of these uh, 24. Four by 36 inch, 150% maps coming up in a couple of days too. And some more write-ups on the technical side of things, because this is a time when I'm dealing a lot with the technical setup and stuff. So, so we get that right. And then once it's set up, I can start cranking out areas and, and working on the technology. So we will, the next post, we will go in and look a bit at the, the terrain fractals, how that is actually built and what kind of devices and, and how you program and, and make sure that rivers always flow downhill and that we don't, you don't get any more rivers that are caught up in, in, in a kind of a cauldron and can't flow anywhere unless you want it. So there's a bunch of these considerations that you have to make terrain, even fantasy terrains need to be basically believable. Even in Greyhawk, most rivers flow downhill, for instance, and most of them will reach the ocean and some of them will not but then it needs to be kind of a special occasion. So a lot of considerations like that. So, yep. Awesome. Well, more content is coming. Yep. More content's good. So normally I will add these into the scroller, but now because I got to use a different uh, a different uh, media uh, thing with the next split, I really, it's almost impossible for me to do that. So I'm going to just throw <laughs> them out on the screen and then yep. remove them. So here's what's going on. Some unbelievable stuff 
and this this kicked it off. This really kicked it off with the discussions. Uh, once again, Daniel, thank you so very much for a wonderful, wonderful discussion this evening. What a fun time, and what a lot of knowledge out there. Yeah. Uh, this is a saver. I guarantee you, we're gonna have a, the, the YouTube hits on this one will be huge as people hear about yeah, it. Yeah, definitely. no doubt about yeah. it. Um, so tomorrow night we continue with adventure number eight ninety eight, Trials of Legion Part Five, crossing into Steel. The big fight is going on between two lesser Bonehearts. Hint, hint. Only one's appeared so far. And the, uh, the the adventuring group, the Legion, as they take this old elderly woman, Asanther, to the Gra ruins of the Gratifus estate for some purpose they are not aware of. And the good thing is, is my guys are not capable or don't care about reading, so they don't know that this is right out of published sources that I've incorporated in. So none of them even, hint, hint, and they're too lazy to even look it up, even if they know. So I don't have to worry about it, So, uh, which is really uh, cool. But if you all know, I had I had some characters dead to rights, and a stupid wild mage, sir, uh, uh, undoing of a spell it healed everyone, and a, a fireball that healed everyone, a positive energy. What a nightmare that was! My wild mage is always, 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 yeah, yeah. See, Armin, I'm allowed to talk that way about my players after 40 years because I know them so well. You know what I mean? If it was a new player, I wouldn't be saying that. But these guys, I'm, uh, you know, um, so. Uh, but wow, what a disaster that was for the DM. But uh, tomorrow night we're going to have a giveaway. I think I'm going to be uh, giving away uh, some uh, a t at least one T-shirt and one mouse pad, and maybe some other uh, some other things. Uh, maybe I can convince Chuck from Troller to give us another giveaway tomorrow night too. So uh, thank you, Whip Size Sign, for that follow. All right, so that's tomorrow night. Now let's start in some unbelievable gabins coming up Sunday night. If you do not know who wrote all these books or assisted in all these books, you're going to, and we're talking about Bastion of Faith. We know that it's Bruce Cordell, but there's a shadow writer and who, who produced a lot of the information in this. One of my favorites of all time. Powers and Pantheons, Faiths and Avatars, de Demi-Human Deities. And I love deities. And I said, I pilfered. I am hopeful that this individual wrote The Red Knight and, and is going to tell me about it. That's how hopeful I am uh, for, for that. And that is Eric Boyd. So Eric Boyd will be on the show Sunday night. Um, he confirmed uh, yesterday. Um, <clears throat> it'll be a great conversation. And we'll, 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 uh, he has done a lot. He, he, he wrote the last <laughs> adventure for Mirror of Dead Men. Gary Hulian gave me a lot of information uh, he wrote uh, about the Crook of Rowell in Earth Journal 3, uh, Worms of Greyhawk in Earth Journals 5, 6, 7, 8, and Polyhedrons, uh, the powers of deities. Uh, there's stuff I didn't even know he did for Greyhawk that I, I need to crack on my uh, research. Don't tell my uh, real company on my home office day on Friday and get this all set up for Sunday. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'm really excited. Uh, Lots of forgotten – there is, Canadian, and if you're not stealing, you're not trying, right? So, um, you know, uh, that's the way I look at it, and uh, stuff that's good, it, fill, it fills a niche. Um, you know, it's, it, it's, it's, it's worth it. Uh, next week's Legends and Lore – it's Elf Week next week. That's what we're going to call it, okay? Yeah. It's Elf Week all next week. So here, here's what we're going to start with. Uh, Legends and Lore on Wednesday, Surface Elves of Greyhawk. I say that for a reason. Um, hey, Scott, Jeff, good to see you, man. Um, so, it's a, uh, the Surface Elves of Greyhawk, we're going to talk about, you know, all of them. You want to talk about Valley Elves? You can talk, you can talk about the Valley Elves, too. Yeah, there's a bunch of them. Yeah, can, yeah. yeah, we can talk about locations and all the different forests and all the political, uh, you know, and, and, and Mike, Anna, and I all have a different little spin on this. Yeah, we have different ideas. And yeah. We have, we have taken it in different directions. Yeah, so, so it'll, be, will be, it'll be a, a real good yep. discussion. Uh, so yeah. that'll be next Wednesday. Thursday, we'll finish up Crossing into Steel. I think it's going to be two more weeks. We're not going to get it done tomorrow night, so that'll be uh, 98, 98. But then next Sunday is the Grand, the Grand Poobah, one of them all, probably for 2021 this early. Um, this uh, one of the guests is a you know top five name of all time in D and D realms. It's still alive to this day. You know this is like Len level and up, and that is we're going to be talking about. And Eric Mengi, this was his idea with me. Everything about Dark Elves and Ed Greenwood will be here. 
And uh, I know uh, I, I know for a fact because I was talking with Tony and Eric today on Twitter and Ed was liking all the posts. So uh, Ed is in. Ed, Ed is in. Tony Winslow, Brill, you may not know, but Tony wrote part of that brand new Candle Keep book that came out. She's one of the writers in it. So we'll have her, and she works with Eric on a lot of stuff they're doing in Moonshay, and they're doing, is that I say I write Moonshay and Forgotten Realms, and with Illustrae, yeah. and so Anna and I are going to be the Greyhawk aspect of what Dark Elves are. Ed and Tony will be the Forgotten Realms, and Eric will be in the middle, because <laughs> he does both. I, I think me and Eric will be in the middle. Because yeah, like okay. Both. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you'll so, be, you, you be Greyhawk. And, and, yeah. yeah. So that'll be the big one um, that, yep. that that's coming up, and uh, yep. um, I am excited about it. And then uh, just announced, this is ninety percent. The next special Saturday night special will be the gaming group we had that went and fought the Deathmaster, and Mike Disney's playing, and Chuck, and Anna, and and Amy. I've uh, I, uh, Amy, Amy, are you are you are you not available that night? Because if you're not, I'll have to get a replacement for you. But I have one in mind. If you're not, but I want you to play, and that's that. It's Saturday, January thirtieth will be the next one. That's you know what, three Saturdays away. So I have my my uh, January thirtieth. I sent you a Discord message, so you can check on that. And if you got to work, uh, you know it's okay. There'll be another one later on, but. Uh, and then Under Dark Uprising is um, February 19th and 20th, and I've been posting stuff everywhere now that Carlos is done. Please look. I'll continue. We're going to have uh, a, a gab in the week before. We'll have a lot of guests on for that, but, um, you know, that's coming for St. Jude's. And St. Jude's, by the way, uh, one of the directors actually followed the Twitch stream, and I posted that up at the beginning. So they're actually they're aware of it now, and that's a good thing, only to help get out the word about about our, our fundraiser event. All right, I've, I've, I've babbled enough. So, um, Daniel, thank you. What a great, great yeah. show. Great show. I, my, I'm going to say one of the top five most informative shows we've had oh, def definitely. of all time. Yep, and that, you know, yep. and so thank you. I mean, That's only because it's new, new to you. <laughs> <laughs> I have a skew to it. More guys are out there saying, oh, yeah, yeah, we know all this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we yeah, did yeah. So we'll uh, have. Uh, a new tidbits of it, so to speak. A new headline here and there. Yeah. That's about it. Well, I have to have We'll have to have I was going to say, for... I like any show that I can just sit by and do show and tell. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, we'll have to have you back for uh, some other special specialty topic or something uh, sure. back in the day, definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And please, I thank you for participating in the uh, in, in the community, and thank you all out there for participating in the community. Yeah. It's just growing, and let's just keep the positive trends going here. Um, like I said, my target's 5,000 for, for St. Jude, uh, over eight, nine streams. I think we can do that. No problem. We did 2,500 last year. I think we can crush it. So, um, we're going to raid, uh, we're going to raid Wicked Studios. Who's got a session one of his new Greyhawk adventures. He's in Lukish, correct? I think. So I'm going to set that up and, uh, oh, thanks, Amy. Thank you all. And we'll see, see you tomorrow night, uh, for some cool, lots of some cool stuff being given away. And, and uh, Matt, this is high level combat as you, as I get. So, um, enjoy it. All right. See you tomorrow night. All right. Setting up the raid. Da da. Awesome. Yeah, that was fantastic. Yep. Oh, that was, that was so good. You know, there was one thing I never mentioned. We still on stream. So yeah. If you don't want to mention it. Yeah. No, that's, that's fine. Uh, okay, I, I just, uh, 75 going in. That is awesome. All right, 76. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. See you tomorrow night. Wow, that's a huge raid for him. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, you know how Greyhawk has living Greyhawk? Yeah. There was a... Um, Sort of living black one that was part of the 3.5. And there's something like a hundred adventures that were written. Was that back in there when they had the living city, or was it even before that? Well, it was. Um, 